Hey everyone, you might recognize me and Eric here from the Nintendo Prime Podcast. I just want to let you know before you get into this segment that this merchandise you see on our shirts and on our cups and on anything else you ever see with Nintendo Prime branding on it, you can get in the description below. You can also get the full audio podcast not segmented in the description below. And if you would like early access to our podcast, please go over to patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime. For $5 a month, you gain early access to the full audio podcast. And well, Mr. Eric, what do you get for $20 a month? Ooh, you get to join us on a podcast. That is right. So, if you would like to ever be on the Nintendo Pride Podcast, get your voice in front of thousands of other Nintendo fans out there. You know what to do. Hit up that $20 tier on Patreon. Anyways, folks, on to the episode. Hey everyone, welcome back to episode 40 of the Nintendo Prime Podcast, and I am joined, as always, by... Oh, wait. I'm, uh, Eric's not here. Eric! Eric! Where'd he go? Ah, he's sick. So, for, yeah, for the very first time in Nintendo Prime Podcast history, Eric Moore will not be joining us this week. He is oh. at home resting. Uh, he told me if I really, 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 really wanted him here, he will come. And I'm like... What happened? I'm like, I feel like a truck just hit me. Oh, huh. well, you know, should probably go to sleep. <laughs> so okay. that is what he's doing. But that doesn't mean we're not going to have a Nintendo Prime podcast. As always, I have promised you guys, when we hit that $100 Patreon goal, come hell or high water, there will be a podcast. Even if I can't make it or Eric can't make it, or for some reason both of us can't make it, then I might have to be like, hey, 5J, let me slip you a 20 <laughs> quick. Can you run this podcast this week? Uh, so we have 5J. Back again. I do it. Hey, what's up, guys? It's nice, nice to have you back. Uh, I can say uh, two podcasts from now we will have Rabbit Luigi on. I just confirmed with him today, so that's going to be fun. Uh, this week's nice. podcast was actually supposed to feature our twenty dollars Patreon backers, but uh, again, none of them available this month. They just like supporting us apparently without showing up on the podcast. So good for them. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it kind of makes my job harder when I rely on them, and then I realize, oh, wait, maybe I should stop relying on them and just schedule people and then just throw them in. But whatever. It is what it is. 5J is always there for the most That's part. right. And you're coming back, or you are back. As of when people hear this, you will have returned to your 5J weekends. Yeah, they'll have seen me streaming uh, this uh, in the future now, this past weekend. <laughs> yeah. So just like last week when there was only two of us, it'll probably be a shorter podcast than usual. But you know what? It's it's okay. We're heading into the holiday season. Uh, this week that you're hearing this podcast is Thanksgiving in the United States. So uh, we have lots of family time. And yes, we will have a podcast recorded this week for next week. Um, I don't know when, but I will figure it out. <laughs> uh, I, have, I literally have no idea when I'm going to pull that off, but it's going to happen. Uh, so let's just hop right into the topics this week. We have three specific topics and then another random time at the end, uh, mm-hmm. which sounds like it's going to be good fun based on what I know 5G wants to talk about. <laughs> uh, so let's just get into topic one. Uh, topic one is uh, what are we playing this week? We haven't done one of these in a long time. Uh, and now yeah, let's just talk about it. So 5G, what's up? What have you been playing lately? Sure. So uh, I think uh, Nate and I both have in common that we've been playing Doom. And uh, I've been very happy with the port that we've gotten on Doom. Uh, I actually did play Doom last year on Xbox 360. Wow. On Xbox One. And uh, I'm, I'm very happy with how it looks on Doom. And the multiplayer, I was able to play Doom multiplayer while I was away last two weekends in the woods uh, in northern Minnesota with a single bar of 4G um, reception. That was enough for me to be able to play online Doom. Amazing! You couldn't do that on your <laughs> Xbox One, could you? So, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, Very Doom. Excited. Good stuff. Um, I have it, and I played it, and I'm enjoying it. In fact, it's funny you bring up the multiplayer. Um you know, last last Monday I uh, streamed multiplayer Doom. See, I, I didn't nice. play Doom uh, last year, so this is my first time playing Doom basically since the '90s. Oh, nice! So I had no idea what was going on, especially in the 2016 version. And uh, 
I'm playing the multiplayer. I'm getting a lot of requests to play single player, but I was playing the multiplayer, and holy crud, it was the most viewed live stream we've ever had in Tender Prime. Oh, really? Nice. Yes. Uh, people were well very, very interested in it, and they didn't go away. And what Ooh. I learned from that experience was that people think that Doom is potentially like the best port job done so far. Oh, it's great. It's a game that technically nobody would have thought would really make a good transition to Switch. And in truth, it's excellent, really. Yeah, I know a lot of people are going to rag on, oh, it's not 60 FPS, it's not 60. Uh, that's fine. Go play Doesn't the 60 matter. FPS versions. But right. I'm telling you right now, when you're playing this, like I, I played it mostly in docked mode, but a little bit in portable. But mm-hmm. I can tell you right now, it doesn't bother me at all. I thought it would bother me. Nope. I have yeah, no issues no. with it. This, this game, I don't know if it's because of the use of motion blur or what it is, but it, it's just so smooth. Yes, yeah. There's that motion blur in what they call it, chromatic aberration. Yeah, whatever. Which, you, you could turn it off. Yeah, whatever. But who, yep, you can turn it off. Don't turn it off. I'm t- I mean, maybe you, you want yeah. to turn it off on PC <laughs> or something, but don't turn it off. Yeah, um, not on the it, Switch. You turn it off on Switch, then suddenly it, it doesn't feel so smooth. Um, <laughs> but like the multiplayer, okay? I, I haven't played... I don't play a lot of online multiplayer shooters besides like Splatoon. Uh, so mm-hmm. I haven't played when I was playing the multiplayer. I'm like, okay, this reminds me of unreal tournament. Oh man. This reminds me of halo. Yes. Yes. I'm like, unreal tournament. Great stuff. I'm like, this is unreal tournament and halo smash together. How come people aren't playing this on other platforms? And then it hit me. Oh, right. Those other platforms have a zillion first person yes. shooter multiplayer options. Just buried. Switch does not. Um, and I feel like that's working an advantage for Doom on Switch, where I, I think mm-hmm. the multiplayer community on Switch, well, it should be crossplay. Come on. Um, yeah. The multiplayer community, I think, is going to last a lot longer for this game than normal because there is no other competing game out there for this kind of multiplayer. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> literally, there's the only first person shooter out there yeah. at the moment. It, it, it's it's just, and it's good. It, it is so good. Like, I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh my gosh, it's revolutionizing things. It's the best multiplayer ever. It's just there's nothing like it on Switch. So it yeah. really, really stands out. And it was astonishing to me having not played a multiplayer game like that and for so long because I've been so tied to Nintendo systems. And that doesn't mean I don't like, you know, I own Xbox One. I own a gaming PC. I just don't play first person shooters on them. Um, yeah. And the ones that I have played have been like Call of Duty, and those are completely different types of first person shooters than this. Right. Um, yeah, Doom is so different from other first person shooters because aesthetically it's not the standard, oh, it's World War II or oh, it's in the future modern w- war fighting. No, this is like you're literally in hell and you have like <laughs> crazy lightning weapons. It's awesome. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and like other games like when you're in when you're playing Call of Duty online, uh you want to make use of a lot of cover, um mm-hmm. a lot of sneaking, a, a lot of people not knowing where you're getting them from. And Doom is mm-hmm. very much get in your face. Like, oh, yeah. Go, like, you cannot like, stop moving in Doom. Of, you have to move all the time. That's what reminded me of Unreal Tournament so much. Is like Unreal Tournament is there's no hiding. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Get good. <laughs> get good, son. Yep. Um, and like it, it's insane how different it is. And I said it reminded me of Halo a little bit, too, because Halo kind of carried on some of the Unreal Tournament stuff over the years. Um, but... I don't know. It's something about this like felt smoother than when I played multiplayer on uh, Halo Five. So, oh, interesting. So we'll we'll see. I mean, I'm not saying like obviously Halo Five had a better FPS, but uh, it's just uh, well, one of those situations where this multiplayer just feels right. It does. It, the, uh, there's not like a thing I could think of to even improve it as it is. Um, just, the the only know. thing I would change, at least I haven't discovered how to do this, is there are certain modes I like to play in mm-hmm. multiplayer, and some of them are just locked behind like a big playlist. So it's like I want to play freeze tag, but if I'm in the the team uh, playlist, it's in there as one of the modes, but you might not yeah, play it's it for random, a long random time. selection, little yeah. roulette action. Um, obviously, I didn't. Well, I, I ran into some of that um, during the live stream. I was playing private matches, so I could pick anything I want. Um, nice oh that's sweet stuck with team deathmatch a lot because i i just like yeah. deathmatch that's a great mode <laughs> i mean it, it's it's traditional it's it's amazing but like the other modes are, are just as fun if not more fun in some cases oh so yeah. good so, uh have you played any other games this past week 
Yes, and I think again once uh, once again we have a similarity in that I also picked up the uh, Rocket League uh, port to Switch, and for me I felt like there was even less of like an evidence of a down port for Rocket League than there was for Doom because this one is running at sixty frames per second. The environments are smaller, so they didn't have to scale back the detail um, sure. quite as much, and the um, resolution is. Um, higher than doom because it's not so hectic uh with all these things moving around and all these yeah, enemies I think it's uh oh man people are gonna say i'm mis- you know mis- being misquoted here but uh i think it's 900p locked while docked but 720 oh, nice. uh with a dynamic resolution that drops to like i don't even know it, it's 800 something by 720 i believe sure um I could be getting that mixed up with Skyrim. Like we're getting all this information rushing at us at once, so I could be confusing. Uh, yeah, could be. But yeah, it's. Have you played Rocket League before? Yeah, I played um, probably mostly on Xbox One, a little bit on PS4, and so this is my third time buying it. And all three times, I bought immediately the DLC for the DeLorean. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that DLC. I was like. Mm. Mm-hmm. it's a up. worthy two dollars hold up hold up let, let me <laughs> let me learn how to play um because this is the first time i played rocket league yet again oh nice um, again not because i didn't have the ability to play it because i knew it was one of those games that's gonna suck me in yeah and when it's gonna be a game that sucks me in it's really hard when my job is to cover a nintendo system but i'm spending all my time playing rocket league now i could yep. justify playing rocket league on a nintendo hey, system um, exactly so yeah uh, the the only you know the footage i put up of it so far anyways i'm a total noob i even tell, tell people in the video hey this footage of rocket league you're seeing i suck i'm gonna suck <laughs> never played before no idea what the controls are went to the training mode even struggled a little bit in training mode as i was figuring out some things and then mm-hmm. i actually ran into a bug in training mode which i don't oh. most people don't probably experience because i don't think a lot of people go into training mode <laughs> Just, yeah, just food not. for thought. Like, especially since it's got crossplay, you could tell. Like, okay, here's the people that have been playing all the time, and then here's right. the Nintendo Switch people all running around with Mario cars. Yep, <laughs> yep. <laughs> and the, all the people running with Mario cars are vastly the worst players on the map. <laughs> so I make sure to run around in a Mario car so I don't confuse anyone. I am one of the worst players, just so you guys know. Um, you, you nice. see, N- NP Nate Jans out there uh, running around in a Mario car or a Luigi car. Just, just don't even. Pretend I'm not on your team. I might need help. <laughs> I, I might make contact with the ball once. Maybe we'll see. Um, oh wow! I'm very, I'm very good at ramming other cars and blowing them up. So if you want me to do that, <laughs> I could be that kind of player for you. Gather the boost, boost up, and destroy cars. Perfect. Um, that's about my only skill in Rocket League right now. Uh, but I understand <laughs> the appeal. Now that I played it, I get it. Yeah, I, I, I get it. it. It's it's fun. It's addicting. Uh, it's insane. Even with me getting wrecked in every match I play, I don't really care. Have you played the mode with the power ups? Not yet. Oh my goodness! So there's a couple of different ways to do it. There's a, a mode where you get these power ups, and they're crazy and they're random. Like one of them is an arm that shoots out uh, quite a long ways at wherever the ball is. It just automatically will sh- punch at the ball. There's another one that will like lasso onto the ball and then pull it towards you so you can use that to pull it away from a goal or maybe to throw it across the the way or whatever uh and there's another one where you just get spikes on your car and the ball will stick to your car and you just drive around with the ball in your car nobody can get it off um so there's a mode where you can trigger that on your own and then there's a mode where just like every 30 seconds everyone gets a power up that goes off instantly and all of a sudden, just like six power ups just trigger. Boom! And you never know what's going to happen. You know, it's insane. That's awesome. Yeah. It's so basically a, crazy it's a mode, mode that makes me feel a little not as bad at the game as I probably am. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's so insane. Yeah. Anyone could play that mode because it's just absolute insanity to the max, dialed it up to 11, you know? Oh, boy. This is going to be, oh, it's going to be insane. Um, <laughs> and obviously, uh, before we go a little further, I do want to apologize to anyone if there's any audio issues on my end. Um, my microphones are kind of crapping the bed right now. 
They've been crapping the bed for a couple of weeks. Um, Uh-oh. I don't know if I'm going to have them next week. It kind of depends on when my money comes in, but I am in the process of ordering two AKG mics. They're, they're decently expensive, but, uh, it, to give you an idea, if you guys have ever listened to an easy allies podcast, it's the, those are the mics they use. So, uh, hmm. Up in the game here, I'm tired of this. The, these mics breaking down right now. These are like the sixth and seventh version of these mics that I've bought. And, and I realized oh. after going through all the money I spent on them that, uh, wow, I could have had even nicer mics than the AKG ones. So, oh, ouch. <laughs> yeah. So, again, these mics aren't bad to get your podcasting life started, but uh, uh, you better plan to replace them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fast that's all i'll say uh so again i just want to apologize i'm literally watching the audio and while everything was perfect earlier now it's suddenly not so i sorry if anything's going wonky on my end anyways um but we're gonna keep your editor will take care of it yeah we'll see (laughs) Uh, we're gonna keep this train rolling uh is there any other games you played this past week yeah i think uh the other big one worth mentioning is farming simulator nintendo switch edition of course you got that game (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so I've uh, I've always been like a Harvest Moon fan or or probably the younger viewers would be more um, recognizing the game Stardew Valley. That style of game I've always loved. And I grew up um, working for a local farmer um, picking corn and stuff. So I've been curious about Farming Simulator for a very long time. And now that it's portable and on a Nintendo system, it's like I couldn't resist. So I gave it a shot and, and, uh, and you know, I'm getting it like any simulator. You don't just jump in and oh, you, you figured it out like that. No, there's a lot of depth in here, but one of the things that should help make it less scary for you is that you choose the difficulty of the game. So there's an easy, normal, hard slider on the beginning when you choose your file. And when you do easy, like I'm doing, it streamlines a bunch of stuff. And uh, if you do the hard mode, then it's like no mercy. You know, you run over a plant, you've killed it. You know, like, ah, awful. Uh, It's really hard. The description is like uh, prices for selling your crops are realistically low. And like you have a bunch of debt from the bank. It's like basically it's like a real farmer, which is really, really, really hard. (laughs) Oh, I don't I don't think I want to do that. (laughs) Man. But uh, it's very interesting. Uh, you get these. Uh, you get three tractors right off the bat, and your tractors can have all sorts of different pieces of equipment that do these different jobs on the fields. Mm-hmm. And it's really cool to be able to see all the different things you can do. Um, and if you like work for another farmer for a field you don't own, you get to use their equipment. So then you can see what other equipment does without having to own it. And you can also lease equipment for the day. Um, so that you don't have to spend like $300,000 on this ridiculous tractor. (laughs) But I want to spend $300,000. You can. And in fact, we found in the game, there is a lamb tractor. Jeez. What? What? Supercar maker Lamborghini makes a tractor. It's out there. It's an officially licensed tractor. Weird. But anyways... Thumbs up. I think it's a cool game. If you're very uh, vaguely curious about it, uh, but not sure if you want to plunk down the full price, maybe wait for a sale or use a gift card or something. But um, because of that easy slider, I think that you guys would all enjoy it if you have some interest in a simulation game. Nice. So, yeah. Cool. Is there anything else? Uh, I think that's the big ones out sure. there. Uh, there were some smaller ones, but I don't yeah. know if it all deserves mentioning. Uh, the only other game I want to bring up that I've played this week wasn't on a Nintendo platform. Uh, <laughs> Star Wars Battlefront 2. Oh! Played it you on, played it? I played it on an Xbox One X. Uh, I have a, a buddy who... Um, he told me not to mention him by name. Uh, oh. He he ended up uh, getting a quote-unquote review copy of it. Uh, oh. So I played it with him. Uh, needless to say, I'm pretty upset. Yes. And uh, I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, by the time you listen to this podcast, I will have already created a video on it because I've already recorded my audio for it. Oh. Um, so you can go back and I'll, I'll link to it and you can go watch uh, my thoughts on Battlefront 2 now. 
What's interesting okay. is as soon as I started making the video, they released an update like they're getting rid of the paid stuff for now. Uh, because what? yeah, like they just like before this podcast started, uh, what? Put out a tweet saying, yeah, we're getting rid of the paid stuff. It's not going to be there. Um, really? They're going to bring it back. But basically they're saying wow. we heard all the criticism. We understand so that it messes with the balance of the later. game. We understand that people are complaining that you have to spend thousands of dollars to unlock everything. Um, so they're going to bring it back eventually, but they're going to make changes to it, which they never were going to get rid of it for good, obviously. But um, at <sighs> least they're pretending they care. So we shall see. I don't know if this is just a PR move and they're really not going to change much and they're just going to kind of throw it back out there without saying anything. Or if they really are going to make a, a positive adjustments. I mean, the bottom line is is that, you know, you're going to have to buy loot, loot crates. You're going to have to buy loot boxes. You're going, to have to, you're going to have to spend money if you want everything in the game. It's just the reality uh, of the game. But, oh, yeah. Um, doesn't mean they can't make it better. Doesn't mean they can't make it easier to get like Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker. Um, right. And my biggest issue with the game that I go over in my video are the bugs. So many bugs in this final version of the game. Oh, no. But again, that was an Xbox One X. The problem is I played the beta on PC, and it had, like, the same bugs. So I don't know if this is, like, exclusive to the Xbox One X PC mm. version. So, like, if you're playing it on PlayStation 4 or, like, even the base Xbox One, maybe it's not a problem. I don't know. I can only tell you what I've experienced. So I'm very disappointed. Hoping it gets patched. I might buy it if it turns out, like, at some point next year that it's actually, you know, a quote-unquote good game then. But right sure. now, um, I'm pretty mad that I'm still waiting for a good Star Wars game. You know, I was actually a big fan of the first Battlefront. Yeah, I realized the problems that were in there. Oh, I, I liked it because, too. Because I knew about those things before I played the game, like my expectations were set, and I wasn't disappointed by them. I yeah, was no, also part I, of the I beta beforehand. I, that's the thing. The, when EA brought back Battlefront, it, I liked that, that game in 2015. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It sucked that, you know... The, the $50 season pass you needed to get in order to basically have the full game. Because uh, they clearly rushed it out to match up with the movie. Whatever. Yep. It happens. Totally. But it, at least it was like 110 bucks and you were 100, yeah, 110 bucks and you were done. Versus now like $2,000 to get everything. Oh, man. That's, it, that's what they calculated it yeah. out to, to get all the... Yeah. Oh, geez. So it's, it's bad. Um, so... Hopefully it's at least less than that um, to get everything if people do want to spend money or they Oof. increase the rate at which you get in-game currency. That would be nice. Or reduce the, how much stuff costs could fix it. There's a lot of different tweaks they can do. And one of the yeah. big things they need to do, uh, th- no matter what they do to the system, they need to get rid of the pay-to-win aspects. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I mean, basically that means the only thing you should be able to get with your cards are cosmetic stuff like they do in Overwatch. And here's the thing, Overwatch makes tons and tons of money hand over fist with just cosmetic items. Mm-hmm. So that that was always my fear was, you know, the balance of the game is too messed up because people can just spend money and win. So, yeah, I mean, totally. again, that doesn't make you good at a game. Like, if you suck at first-person shooters, no amount of amazing gear is going to make you not suck. Um, yep. But if you and another place, person are equally skilled, well, because that person has more money than you, they're going to kill you like 90% of the time. Um, so that is obviously something that needs to be addressed no matter what they do with the system. Uh, regardless right. of if it still costs a lot of money to unlock everything in the game, just don't like mess with the balance. Um, so hopefully they at least fix that. I don't know. They say they hear, they say they're listening, but, uh, proof will be in the pudding when they bring, when they bring the paid stuff back. Yeah. I'm so disappointed because they, it sounds like they fixed a lot of the things that people didn't like about the first game. And then it's like, okay, perfect. You got, well, everything's amazing it's my most disappointing thing that they like fixed because like one of the one of the big there's two big things they brought back in this game that were missing from the first one space battles it, well yeah real like fleshed real, out space battles like real yeah. full-out space battles like used to be in the old battlefront games and then yep. an actual campaign yeah, um, exactly and, and I, I, I won't, I won't like spoil anything back. about the campaign except saying it's really really good like the story is really good the oh, you played, buggy. Oh. It's buggy as hell, but the story is really good. If you can actually get past the bugs and beat the levels, the story is really good. The problem is it doesn't end, and it sounds like the ending's coming in free updates in the future. So, oh, 
I, I, so I listened to a podcast that was talking about writing the story of it and what they said, and they couldn't include any spoilers because the game's not out. So they, they couldn't even put anything in there. But so just like really general statement is that it covers literally a 30 year span. It does. Yep. For this campaign. And I can't even imagine what that's going to be. And then it's good. I'm very excited. Yeah. I really like the story. It just doesn't, it doesn't conclude at all. It just kind of leaves you sitting there and it, and it's really upsetting. And when you, if you pay attention to development, like, Oh yeah, it'll be in free updates because the big thing, the big thing about this game is there's no season pass. There's no paid DLC. So all future updates are free. Their entire monetary system is built around the loot boxes, um, which is fine. That's basically the Overwatch route, right? They keep adding new content, and they make their money through loot boxes. Yeah. Um, it, like I said, you know, I know some people have issues with that. I don't mind as long as it's just cosmetic because I don't really care about cosmetics. You know, if I happen to get a rare cosmetic through a, a loot box I earned in-game, sweet, cool. Don't really Yay. care. It's not why I play. Um, some of it can be like really cool fan service. Yeah, you know, oh, yeah. The, the people the, that care about it, like, oh, this was in uh, a comic from 1977, like, oh, cool. And that, I, I'll just say this about Battlefront 2. When it's not bugging out, when it's working well, it might be the best Star Wars game I've ever played. Ooh. But the problem is that it's not like that all the time. So it's mm. one of the worst Star Wars games I've ever played. It Rats. single-handedly has that. Like, that's what sucks, why I'm so frustrated with it. And I talk about it in that video is just you have you see what it can be and then something happens that just takes you completely out of it. Like falling through mm. the world or oh, just, just like these game breaking bugs that are just stupid glitching into a wall and you can't get out. And if you oh, don't have man. a recent save, you're just screwed. If it happens in multiplayer, you're just screwed for the whole match. Um, oh, man. Whoa. yeah. It, th- there's some bad bugs. That I assume they will get ironed out over the next few months because they usually do when they're that bad, but they shouldn't be there in the first place. <laughs> Not especially <laughs> when they were there. Like these are the same bugs I experienced in beta, so like they knew. I didn't bugs. have those. That that's interesting. <sighs> but I was on a normal Xbox One. Yeah, Not again, like and different versions are, are going to have different bugs, um, different yeah. optimization. Blah, blah, yeah, blah. yeah. It's just like. Uh, you know, like Assassin's Creed Unity had a bunch of issues on PC that didn't exist on PlayStation 4. Sure. Um, that's just the way it's going to be. But uh, as I said, I hope that if you guys buy Battlefront 2, that you guys end up not having these issues. Because when those issues don't happen, I, it's a rather good game, as it should be. It's made by DICE, uh, who just came off of Battlefield World War One, which is a very good game. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if this is a company that knows how to make good games. Like a, a studio that knows what they're doing, but again, I I question if these bugs aren't ironed out completely because, hey, guess what? There's another big Star Wars movie coming out. Yeah, I mean that's very possible because I imagine they're planning to drop the DLC that pertains to the movie before the movie comes out. Yep, so they, or they, even they the got... day the movie comes out. It, it's just yeah. I I don't know I. I don't know. Uh, I just feel like, again, it, it's convenient how they... The excuse last time was an, a new Star Wars movie coming out, so we had to rush it. The excuse this time, they won't even mention the new Star Wars movie, but very clearly these bugs ex- exist that should not exist. You should have delayed this game like six months and got this ironed out. Just my yep. opinion, of course. Uh, they might argue, well, we can't delay it six months because then, you know, it's not releasing during the holidays. It's a Star Wars. Yeah, it won't really matter. It, it doesn't need holidays to sell. No, <laughs> just telling you right now, EA, if that's why, like you needed to get it out because the holiday. No, you don't. No. I think EA had said originally that Star Wars Battlefront, the first one was underperformed, but it had sold like 12 million copies when they said that. And it's like, what? that was underperforming. Like, what were your expectations? Wow. Um, I don't know. I, you'd, have to look at what the old, you'd have to look at what the old Battlefront game sold. That's probably what their right. baseline was. And if those games moved like 20 million plus, they would have been like, hey. But, I mean, yeah, 12 million people plus bought the game, uh, despite, you know, who, however many people bought the, the season pass to go with that, too. Um, yeah. I know I was one of them that paid for the season pass. Again, I really liked that first one. That's why I had, yeah. I knew the game was going to be too heavily in loot boxes and that was always going to upset me. But I'm like, but if the actual game is good, then. Right. It, just like in Shadow of War, like Shadow of War, the game itself is really damn good. 
So like the mm. loot box stuff sucks, but as much as like you can kind of ignore it, like the game reminds you about it, but um, and that's annoying because you're trying to ignore it, and then all of a sudden it's like, hey, you have a loot box. I'm like, eh, no. <laughs> but uh, at least when I'm not, you know, getting those pop ups or anything, yeah, the game's really really fun, and that's what I'm hoping for Battlefront Two. Hopefully, it gets to that point on Xbox One X and PC. Um, again. It sounds like maybe like I've heard other people say they're not having these issues and I'm like, that's fine. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want these, but I can only go off my own experience. So, um, move on to our next topic here. Uh, the game awards is coming up. Ooh. For those who don't know what the game awards is, it is a, uh, I guess a, an Emmy style award ceremony for video games. Uh, yep. that's at least the goal of what it is. It is to create like the Emmy of video games uh yep. the golden globe of video games or however you want to look at it and it is hosted by jeff Keeley. and what i always respected about this game award show uh i know i think this is the fourth year it's been running um and and there's been game award shows before spike tv used to host it and it was terrible um, yeah <laughs> and the thing is jeff Keeley hosted those for spike tv but like it sounded like spike tv really was holding things back and not giving it a proper budget blah 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 um sure so like what i always respected about the game awards is that the very first uh, Game Awards, anyways, uh, Jeff Keighley paid for it out of pocket. Uh, he took a big risk and basically put his entire savings on the line. Wow. Um, and it paid off, and it worked. And they were able to bring it back again and again and again. And now, you know, there's sponsorships. And, like, we, we saw that a lot last year. There's a lot more um, check out our sponsor. Or here's the Ubisoft backroom, blah, 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 blah. Right. Um, <laughs> and, like, that's very clearly, like, it's... It, like you can say it's annoying, but then on the other side of it, you're like, well, yeah, but that's how the show is paid for. Um, it's yeah. just like ads on, on radio and stuff. Like, yeah, the radio is free, but that's free because there's ads. Yeah. Um, which is why I've always found cable television interesting because it's not free and there's ads. <laughs> that's why I resent Hulu's two payment tier structure. The once free platform that used ads to pay for itself now has a, a, a level where you pay for ads. I'm like, you got to be kidding for, me. For, uh, yeah, you pay, but you get a little bit of ads. Or you can pay and get rid of the uh, ads, except for most of the shows you probably are paying to watch in the first place are not included in that and still have ads. <laughs> I what? know because I, I pay for the top service and I watch oh, like Empire, right? Like I have DirecTV now, so I can go watch these shows through oh, DirecTV man. now. Um, so I don't even need Hulu. Like I basically have Hulu for, I don't even watch most of the Hulu originals. Um, so no, I don't. I, all the shows I can actually just go through DirecTV now because DirecTV now has its own DVR service, but mm-hmm. like the DirecTV now DVR doesn't always have the episodes. Um, right. Yeah. It, it DirecTV now is kind of newer. So they're, they're basically they're working on it. Uh, mm-hmm. so I still use Hulu. Um, especially because I can't put DirecTV now on every TV I have, uh, because, like my smart TV in my office can't it, it, it's app store doesn't have direct TV now. Uh, and my Nintendo switch is hooked up to it. doesn't have direct TV now. Um, so if I want to watch, but it does have Hulu now, but if, yeah, but if I want to watch my shows, I can do it through Hulu. So like, there's still some convenience yeah. there because Hulu is more widely available. Yeah. Um, and it's really not that expensive, like 10 bucks, 11 bucks, whatever it is, uh, which is fine. It's fine. But, um, yeah, the, the you'll pay for it, and then some of the like I like I watch shows like Empire or Scandal or whatever. And as soon as you fire it up, it's like this show is not included in your ads free programming, so it will have that is ad, it will have an ad before and after the episode. And it's like okay, I'm obviously not gonna watch the one after the episode anyways. But it's like really, yeah, that is ruthless. It, Hulu. Come uh, on. It'd be different if that episode was available for free anyways, like it used to be, but it's not. So, right. So, like, that's that's my thing. Like, if you're gonna have the ads, at least I have that episode for free. And yeah. Then, when, then you're then like, if they just had like the latest five episodes for free, and then you were paying to gain access to the full season, I get that. Sure. But that's not what I don't know. Anyways, I'm sure it has a lot to do with contracts with all these different companies. Um, I mean, you, you even look at services like Netflix. I love Netflix, and probably the only reason I'm keeping Netflix now is the original programming, because they're losing mm-hmm. a lot of companies really fast yeah i don't know why either it's so strange well because they all want to launch their own services sure they want a bigger slice of the pie they don't want to go through netflix um and it sucks because now our 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 tv is slowly being piecemealed 
Um, right. It's going back to cable programming. Kind but of. But in a different stream, yeah, approach where you have to pay. Like, like DirecTV now, the only reason I have it is because right now it has the best lineup of channels. But how long is that going to last before some of these companies are like Disney and being like, yeah, we're just going to run our own streaming service. Yep. So we'll see what happens with all that. Uh, at first, I liked the fact that everything was going to streaming TV. And now I'm like, oh, boy. Yeah, starting to become a mess. Um, unless, you know, maybe it gets so fragmented at one point that all these companies come together and be like, look, we need to form like a a union and, and offer a platform that allows you to subscribe to all these services for cheaper under one umbrella. Um, and we'll call it Netflix. <laughs> yeah, the thing is like Netflix is so huge right now. Um, and to be fair, Netflix still gets good shows and, and they still get good, new movies and stuff. But uh, to be, I mean, I don't know. Netflix is so good with their original programming now. They probably don't care. Yeah. Like they they're don't. like their HBO level at this point. Or they're even they're even bigger than that because the amount of shows they produce is insane. It is crazy. There, there's they, something they for made, everyone. They made like House of Cards and they put out a statement that was like, "Don't expect us to be the original programming company because that's not really what we do." And it was like immediately they just changed their minds and they're like, "Nah, never mind. We're gonna make yeah, a lot." Yeah, because House of Cards blew <laughs> up and they're like, "Uh, okay, let's try this. Oh, let's try that. Let's try Narcos. Let's do that." Yeah. All of a sudden, like. Yeah, everything you're releasing is HBO quality, and it's amazing. Yeah, uh, you could argue maybe there's not a show quite on the level of Game of Thrones yet, but it's not because Netflix can't do it, right? You know, they just haven't gotten like an IP license like that to pull it off with. Plus, Netflix would know that like that's a super like HBO is so great at what they do because they they tend to go like super high budget, high risk. Sure. Um, which is why like like one of my favorite HBO series of all time was actually Rome. Um, Rome. Loved that that show. It ran for like 3 seasons. It was super high budget, like Game of Thrones budget. Um it just wasn't getting the viewership to support that kind of budget, so they had to cancel it after 3 seasons, but um that's one thing I always liked about HBO. They they they, they just go all in. And when it works, they make tons of money. Like Game of Thrones. I'm sure they've made oodles and oodles of money off that show. Uh, yeah, dollar or two, I reckon. So getting back to the Game Awards <laughs> itself, um, I've always respected it because of that, and it's coming back again on December 7th. Uh, and Nintendo's up for like 13 different awards or something. Wasn't it like 26? There, it was there, like it was a lot. There, uh, I believe there's uh, 30 total awards being handed out. Oh. Um, and then, oh, but they're okay. They're nominated twenty four times. Yeah, yeah. They're they're nominated twenty four times. A lot of it is like Zelda and Mario nominated for the same award, um, so they can win thirteen right. awards. Um, sure. And that and that's counting, I think, two awards that are technically Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle eligible. Um, sure. So it'd be a, it would be Ubisoft going up on stage, but it has a Nintendo IP involved. Um, right. Yeah. So obviously Mario would be a big recognition for that game. In fact. I don't even know. Like it might be someone from Nintendo and Ubisoft that go up for that award. I have no idea if it wins. Um, Potentially. So, a couple of things I want to talk about this because we're not going to go over every award they could possibly win. We could end up having a whole podcast just talking about projecting winners and blah blah blah. Right. Um, the Game Awards is basically known for two big things. Obviously, there's the awards first and foremost, and then after that, no. it's like the new trailers and game announcements. Yeah, Um, because it's basically like its own E3 style event uh, that Mm -hmm. lasts like two to three hours and a bunch of awards. And here's some new trailers for games coming out next year. Uh, And Nintendo has always had a big presence at this event. Uh, Reggie fils is actually on the board for the event. Uh, He's been on the board since the beginning. He's been at every single game awards so far. Uh, Obviously, the biggest game they showed off, which was the biggest shocker when the very first game awards was Zelda. Um, so Breath of the Wild that was the first time we saw actual gameplay of it but they've shown other games there as well oh, cool. um, so first let's talk about that um, Jeff Keighley announced that there's going to be uh, the largest uh, world premiere um, slate of games ever and it's to be noted world mm-hmm. premiere by Jeff Keighley does not mean like the first time you're ever seeing the game it just means an exclusive trailer um, so you know, we could see a Red Dead Redemption 2 trailer when we've already seen Red Dead Redemption 2, blah, 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 blah. Um, but he did, sure? note, he did note that there's going to be several, like, like 
uh, someone asked him if any of those world reveals are going to be uh, games that are not currently announced, and he said several. So, oh, sweet. Yeah. The thing is, is we could speculate all day about what those games could be, but I want to talk about Nintendo because Nintendo's always had a big presence. Nintendo is up for almost half of the awards at the ceremony, so they're clearly going to be awesome. there. They know they have a huge presence, um, and they know the Switch is blowing up. So this year, more than any of the other years, which were during the Wii U era, <laughs> yes. feels like this is the time for Nintendo to hit us with something. Hit us yeah, with an pounce. announcement, because this is after Xenoblade Chronicles 2 comes out, and we're all just waiting for what's next. Yeah. What should Nintendo announce at this event, or show off at this event, if it's not announcing a new game? That would hit with the crowd, because remember, the crowd that watches this, really to me, feels like the crowd that owns the Switch. Right. You know, it's it's more serious gamers that care about this stuff. It's not a new game, you say. It, well, it it can it can be a new game, or okay. like, say, like yeah. first off, do we think Nintendo's going to unveil like a, a, a currently unannounced game? Uh, see, you never know with Nintendo. They're going to have games. They out, could get up percent. there and be like, "Hey, here comes Pac Man versus." Or they could be like, here's Breath of the Wild first footage ever. And you're like, well, you know. Yeah, some people were hoping for the <laughs> DLC footage to be unveiled there. Oh, that, that's in, no, that's interesting and, and probably like really, really practical and but maybe well, I a feel little like, bland. I feel like that would be more of a minor thing. Right, exactly. Uh, I feel like, it'd be like oh, Breath of the Wild just won Game of the Year. Here's the DLC footage. Like that'd be a good right. like combo. Or in, in any win that Breath of the Wild gets, it would be a good combo time to show off a you know, a trailer for the new DLC if it's hitting in the middle of December. But mm-hmm. I also think that as big as Breath of the Wild is, a DLC trailer is kind of a, a, a small thing. Yeah, exactly. Um, especially because like, it's not probably going to sell more people on Breath of the Wild. Um, it's just going to make people who already own it, who haven't bought the DLC yet, buy it. Right. Um, so do we think Nintendo's going to show off a new game? I think it's possible i think there's a lot of things that we're waiting for smash bros being one of them right we would love to hear a smash brothers announcement uh we already know that they're working on pokemon and metroid prime i don't think pokemon's very far along but i think metroid prime's a little bit of a mystery wouldn't it be if they've been working on this for a while maybe they have a trailer or at least a short teaser you know when you mentioned smash bros it, it reminded me of like this dual announcement thing that I think would be everything I want. I don't really care what happens at the game awards if this happened. Um, there's a new kingdom hearts three trailer that happens to have a switch Ooh. logo at the end. Oh yeah. And, that would be sweet. And then smash bros, you know, five gets announced and the character from kingdom hearts is playable in it. Oh, awesome. No, that would totally work. So you tie yeah, it that in. Relationship. Oh, so you tie in the character. It's the same speculation people have with, oh, it's Final Fantasy VII coming to Nintendo platform because Cloud's in the game. Um, is Final Fantasy VII ever actually going to yeah, come? Ever, ever come? Other around. question. Um, but like <laughs> Kingdom Hearts Three is going to come to Switch, and then they also have this dual announcement where like there's this extra promo by having it in the new Smash game. Um, that to me, I think is like the perfect combination. Yeah. Um, or even if they announce a Smash game first and then include them and get people thinking, oh yeah, they did this with Cloud. It doesn't mean anything. I think, though, that Sora or anyone from Kingdom Hearts would be a really good fit, though, because it's sort of a mix of cool and, like, child-friendly because you're hitting somebody with a giant The key. only thing I want <laughs> that I, I don't know that this matters, since especially if it's Sora, who isn't a Disney character, um, but because it's, it's a game based heavily in Disney characters, if Disney would be like, you can't really do that because Nintendo works with Universal. Yeah, I don't know I, how petty Disney would be about that. Because I feel like someone like Sora would actually be a Square Enix character. Then, yeah, yeah, Sora's not. I, I guarantee you that's a that's a wholly created and owned character of Square Enix. So yeah, it, would, it, it wouldn't be like Mickey Mouse. But, but then there, you know, the thing King is, it's like I, I was like, well, Disney's always released games on Nintendo platforms, anyways. Do they really care? They just want money. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I it's not that. like Nintendo's going to go to Universal Parks and build a Kingdom Hearts three section. So, yeah <laughs> so yeah and if they did be, would, would, would disney really complain because they would probably get a royalty off of that yeah <laughs> yeah that's true but they are rivals um 
Man, that would be a killer announcement. Yeah, you've impressed yourself with that one. <laughs> well, it was your idea, and I'm just like, oh, man. Yeah, no, a Smash Brothers would be great. I think it's also like a, a pretty obvious one. What would be like less obvious? Like what would be like a weird left field one? Mother 3. Some- Mother th- Mother Three would be awesome, but I, mean, that's, I don't think that's this is exactly the the one hundred percent right crowd for that. But if you're looking no. for a live reaction, what what about F Zero? Like, there's a live audience here with a bunch of game developers, so it's like, what's going to blow their minds? Um, you know, if you really want to, because Nintendo doesn't do live events really. Anyway. No, they don't. So like, if they're no. going to show something, they probably want a big crowd reaction from other game developers. Zelda gave that to them, kind of. It was off screen yep. footage, so they kind of bit themselves in the you know in the booty with that. Um, <laughs> I kept thinking like Metroid, you know, Metroid Prime Four showing that for the first time would obviously get people excited. It is the right yes. crowd for it, but Metroid is also not like the super big franchise. So I I don't know. Um, it's tough because you think like oh they should just show a Pokemon and it's like eh. one I don't know if Pokemon's ready to be shown and even if it is ready to be shown. Switch one, no. It doesn't need the Game Awards. No, it does not. <laughs> like, not at all. <laughs> it's going to sell like 10 million copies on its own. It doesn't need... They that. could put the game on sale for one day and then take it off the market, and <laughs> as long as they had the supply, they would sell 20 million copies. <laughs> well, maybe. maybe. There's got to be 20 million Switches out there first. Yeah. Um, which, hey, you, it might you know be selling I mean. 30 million it, next year, so who knows? They could that handle happen. it. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, oh, like an auto left field announcement that would really uh, capture people. It, it's unless, I mean, I know this is a way out there announcement. Well, what if Breath of the Wild 2 is happening? Oh, my goodness. The, like the Majora's yeah. Mask, that bad boy. Majora's Mask style, yeah. A year later. Like, that oh, could blow some people's minds, especially coming off, like, if it wins Game of the Year and all of a sudden it's like, oh, and by the way, we have a second one coming. You know, it's not completely impossible because I bet that they did slow down um, the release of Breath of the Wild so that it would be simultaneously Wii U and Switch. Oh, yeah. Plus yeah. all the DLC they're working on. That's not like the whole Zelda team is working on no. the DLC. No. no, it's a smaller team. So if they've had potentially several months from before the release of Breath of the Wild and now up until, you know, maybe fall of next year, I mean, that's yeah. a pretty good long I mean, amount of time think, to do like that a same shocking. engine sequel. It, it would that would be shocking because no one thinks it would be announced yet. No, uh, if there was going to be a Zelda sequel coming quick, they wouldn't think it's coming out till like twenty nineteen at the earliest, and we'd be announced right. at E three next year. Um, if they were going to Majora's Mask, it. so that's why I said like in terms of surprising to be that. Um, another announcement that I think could really work in Nintendo's favor uh, is if we find out Bayonetta three is coming to Switch. Oh, yeah, good one. Really good one. Uh, obviously, with the dual announcement of, you know, the reporting one and two over as well um, to release, you know, early next year and then Bayonetta 3 to hit the end of the year or something. Uh, yeah. And I, I don't Sweet. know, like, I realize, again, Bayonetta is, again, not a super super popular franchise per se, uh, but you have to wonder now, a portable factor, um, a lot more adult gamers owning this versus children. Uh, yep. It could very well end up selling very well. I mean... Well, the thing is, like some of the some of the biggest announcements that I think could happen for Nintendo are going to be something like that. That's like a, a major, a semi-major third-party game coming to Switch, like exclusively, for some reason. Ooh. Um, as awesome as it will be. Oh, we're getting Kingdom Hearts three. Oh, we're getting this. But really, the best games are going to be those exclusive ones, like the Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle, like the ones yeah, that are built from the ground up just for Switch. Right. Um. And I, I keep thinking, like, what franchise would, would be... It, it is kind of like that, where it's... Like a Bayonetta, where it's not super, super popular, but it's got an audience. Um, F-Zero. I mean, F-Zero is Nintendo's <laughs> IP. I don't... You know, oh, I just have... oh the, the one I would love to see happen. It's not going to. But it would be awesome to see a Time Splitters get announced. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we were talking about that recently. Like, I mean... But again, these are a lot of left field. Like, these aren't going to happen. <laughs> that one for sure, not happening. Um, <laughs> Confirmed. You know, if, even, if you just look at Nintendo IP, I keep thinking, like, what's going to hit with this crowd? It's basically uh, Zelda, Metroid, and, like, a Mario game that's like Odyssey. 
Um, a lot of their other games aren't really yeah. good. Like if they show, if they come in here and play it safe and just show Yoshi off, that's the crowd's not going to care. Or like another Donkey Kong Country game. I feel like people are what like about, actively mad at retro. Well, yeah. What <laughs> what's what the hell is retro making? We, that, you know, that's a really good point. They, Maybe they that's what we're going to see. Had a game come out since Tropical Freeze. They're yeah. not making the new Metro game. They said like they're not making another Donkey Kong Country game. So if they're not making another, you know, Donkey Kong Country, they're not making Metroid, which are the only games they've really made. Yeah, what, what's they've helped they, what's out on smaller games. This but... long, like, like this is like three, four years now. What the, I mean, the only thing, the only thing I could say, if they're taking three to four years on a game, is it has to be a new IP. Yeah, it has and to be something be really cool. they want to make sure they get right. You know, and I'm kind of curious, what if it is a proper Nintendo first-person shooter game? Okay. Not Metroid-style exploration game that has some shooting elements, but like a real Nintendo IP first-person shooter. Because that is something they're severely lacking in terms of genres. Sure. They're now hitting things like open world and that kind of stuff that have been around for a while. And they've hit it well with Breath of the Wild, right? And, and a little yeah. bit there with Odyssey, well, I, sort of. Yeah, I wonder if it's going to be that. I wonder if it's going to be a, a Nintendo Western RPG. Um, oh, oh, ooh. Because, like, I know uh, Xenoblade like tried to do that, and then they kind of realized, hey, we're good at JRPGs. That's what we should be doing. Yeah, um, yeah that was JRPG I was mentioning. And uh, it, it could be that. It could be... I mean, it could be anything. It's got to be something ambitious. If it comes out, it's just like a side-scrolling something, something that really you spent five years on it. <laughs> That's what you came up with? Okay, something obviously was in the works and got canned, right? Because that can't be what you spent. You have so much talent at the yeah. studio. They can't be what it's you a match play. three puzzle game. <laughs> um, so, I, I don't know. I mean, it's possible. Some people even speculated, hey, maybe they're making their own Zelda game. And they've been given free reign to do whatever mm. the heck they want. And they've been making it this whole time. Um, and it's just going to come out of left field and completely unexpected. Maybe it's like a Zelda MMO or something. Um, just something crazy. Because, like, Nintendo has yeah, a lot. Like, like, yeah. like, I even thought, like, one thing I really want them to do is I want them to make another action-adventure game. All they have is Zelda. Why? Yeah, that's that's fair. <laughs> Why? Why can't we have another action adventure game with a different setting, different characters? Different right, board? they made a crap ton of platformers out there. Yeah, like like they had no problem making a bunch of platformers. So why can't we have multiple action adventure games? They're clearly extremely popular. Yeah, like even the Uncharted series. Yeah, it's shoot shoot, but it's an action adventure game. That's that's what it is. Oh, the shooting mechanics are very simple. Yeah, it's an action adventure game. Like, yes. why can't we get more? And that, like, think about that. Like, think about how different Uncharted is from Zelda. There's no way Nintendo can't fit another action adventure game in there somewhere. Um, and I feel like because Retro is a Western studio, and because the the Switch is blowing up so much in the West, they have to make a game that appeals to the West. I would be kind yeah. of upset if they came out with like, uh, we're we're making like a, a dating sim or something. Oh, you know what? It could be Tingle's Rosy Rupee Land 2, actually. <laughs> Four Tingle games. Come on now. Yeah. The stories in those games are good. Some of the gameplays. Some of the gameplays. I've never tried them. They're, they're definitely, I mean, you have to like Tingle. Let's just put it that way. They're Tingle forward, they're huh? Tingle forward. Um, <laughs> so I guess we got over a bunch of wild and crazy speculation there. Uh, so let's just talk about the only award that matters. Actually, I shouldn't say it's the only award that matters. I actually think there's an award that's more important, but uh, I won't talk about that now. We'll save that for another time. Uh, game of the year. Nintendo's got two games up for game of the year. Any guess at what those games are? I'm going to say ARMS and Picross S. Close. <laughs> I mean, ARMS that is up for it, huh? Arms is up for an award. Probably not going to win it, but it, it is up for an award. Is um, it up for fighting game? Yeah, it's, it's up for best fighting game. Cool. It's not going to win. It's not going to win. <laughs> but I mean, I looked at the list of the cool. fighting games. None of them are really that impressive. So I, sure. maybe the most impressive one is the one that's coming out on Switch randomly in the next month. That's basically least Smash bugs and least disappointing. What? Yeah, because Arms was like the least bugs and the least disappointing. 
No, well, I, I'm just saying, like, the best fighting game probably coming out this year is the Smash Bros. clone coming out on Switch here in, like, the next yeah. month. Oh, yeah. Well, what is that called again? I, I forget what it's called, but, like, it looks really, really good because it looks like Smash Bros. <laughs> and it's, like, a bunch of various indie yeah, game characters. Yeah, a bunch of indie characters, yeah. Um, yeah. So, obviously, it's Super Mario Odyssey against Breath of the Wild. Uh, there are obviously, other games. yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, you have Odyssey, Breath of the Wild. I think it's uh, Horizon. Uh, near Automa, and I forget what the other one is. Whatever, it doesn't really matter because it's probably going to be Odyssey or Breath of the Wild anyways. And I'm not saying that because those other games aren't fantastic. I'm saying that because by far and away, Breath of the Wild and Mario Odyssey scored higher review scores than every other game that's even remotely being considered. Yeah, it's um, amazing. And considering that only 10% of the vote is by the fans, and otherwise it's, the rest is like by the panel and everything, uh, yeah, it's going to be Breath of the Wild or Odyssey because the panel really, really likes Breath of the Wild or Odyssey. So, um, the question is, which one of them is going to be Game of the Year? Yeah, that's the thing. So, personally, I think it's going to be Breath of the Wild. Agree? Disagree? Explain. <laughs> Just wondered where to go from there. Um, so, nothing against Mario Odyssey. Because I personally, I love Mario Odyssey. I am really looking forward to getting the rest of the moons. Um, I think I'm at about 600, something like that. It's a crap ton of power moons. I still have like 300 some to go. Uh, anyway, I love that game. I think it's an amazing 3D platformer. And if it wasn't going up against Breath of the Wild, I would say that it would win. But it seems to me that when Breath of the Wild came out, the entire gaming industry was just in an uproar about how amazing this game was. And people who have never spoken to me about video games ever, and I didn't know they even played video games, they went out and they got this game and they played this game and they were raving about this game on social media. I'm like, you play games? Wow, that's incredible. I never knew that. Never once posted anything gaming related. That's Maybe they okay, don't play games very often. Right, and and that's one of those things. I've never seen a game come out where they've done that before, and all of the news channel, the media channels, you know, same thing. Just everybody just freaking out about discovering some new little trick you could do in the physics engine of Breath of the Wild, or holy crap, I found this hidden over here, kind of thing, and. Oh, just exploring those mountaintops. Like, there's such a, a grand epic scale that I don't think that Mario Odyssey can quite reach because it's not going for that. It's. Yeah, I feel yeah. like. Man. That Breath of the Wild's advantage is the wow factor. It, it, yes. It's, a, it's such a departure from where Zelda has been heading. Yes. I'm not going to say Zelda's never been open world. There's never been RPG elements. There's never been this, never been that. Because for the most right. part, there has. There hasn't been a physics engine like this or a cooking system like this or an item breaking system. Whatever. The, those systems have necessarily existed like in Zelda. Although, again, p- people will remind me, yes, there were items that broke in the past, but come on. This isn't, like, remotely comparable. <laughs> but <laughs> there hasn't been a Zelda game like this, arguably, ever. No. Um, And because of that, there's this wow shock factor nintendo of all companies with their super high quality control um their all the delays all all the hype building released a game that for a lot of people it feels like they've never played an action adventure game like that before mm-hmm. they played rpgs like that skyrim blah, blah 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 but nothing like zelda um so it really blew them away odyssey yeah we've played games like this before Right. Super Mario 64. Uh, you know, Sunshine to a degree. Uh, Galaxy a little bit. It, it, the, they're games that uh, that are t- clearly this is inspired by. Yeah. The thing with Odyssey that also goes at the edge is one, Mario is just more popular. Uh, yep. Two, Odyssey right now is being touted as the greatest Mario game ever. And so now if you're debating between what people are calling the greatest Zelda game versus the greatest Mario game, Mario is usually going to have a slight edge in that just because of how popular it is. Yeah. Um, and, and how just how it many is Mario to larger audiences. How many Mario games there are compared to Zelda? Like, oh my God, 
to have like the cream of the crop. Uh, where there's some people that don't like some of the mechanics in Breath of the Wild so much, they actually still prefer other games in the series. Uh, whereas right now, I, I've met very few people that will tell me that Odyssey is not at least in consideration for the best Mario game ever made. Um, sure. It has... Uh, <laughs> I know this is weird, but Odyssey does have the most memorable soundtrack. Um, Jump Up Superstar is... I I mean I know the soundtrack I think is also up for you know best composition of the year. Um, it's the most memorable song to come out this year for, in all the video games. Yeah, uh, but memorable with, like, in a good jazz. way or memorable in a bad way. Well, I, I think <laughs> people who like Mario games like the song. Uh, people who aren't like the biggest fan of Mario games are like really yeah. this jazz thing is what people everyone's talking about. Like oh, Nintendo has people dancing in the street. Like uh, okay. That's kind of weird. Um, <laughs> but that's the thing. That's what also makes it so good. Uh, it's just how different it is, right? It's very different. Um, and I love that about about this game. Um, about the game is just like, it, it's so memorable. Like, if we think about, think about, like, uh, what's the most memorable tune in Breath of the Wild? Can you even hum it off the top of your head? Uh, a cover of another Zelda track in a previous game. <laughs> doubtless so like it, it, you know mario's got t- i mean th- there are some callbacks to some old songs in it but but like it just soundtrack wise it, it's amazing and like when i'm even thinking now of all the other games i played this year um the only other song that even sticks in my head is the theme song to arms mm. um, and that's i don't know if it's because it's good or just because that's the only thing they played for like six months Every time yeah. <laughs> they showed off the game, even now with new trailers, it's the same song. It's like, great, you created one great song and nothing else. <laughs> um, <laughs> and like, we're in Odyssey, there's other music and stuff in there. Um, so I, I kind of get that edge. You know, if you think about the music to Odyssey, uh, you can get the edge in terms of popularity. You can argue the game quality is on par, at least review wise. They have the same review score. So, um, yep. Performance and resolution wise, it's probably got an edge as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, it is it is exclusive on Switch. I don't know if that's going to matter, but yeah, ex- exactly. Um, if anyone considers that kind of stuff, and we also have to remember that it's the most recent release, so yep. it's the freshest in people's minds. Not that Breath of the Wild's ever going to go away. It always, I mean, we just had the. Uh, <laughs> Not too long ago, the editor in chief of Polygon freaking out over losing his save file that he didn't actually lose for Breath of the Wild. So Breath of the Wild <laughs> is still very much a game that people passionately care about. Um, yeah, I and think, I feel like it deserves something to commemorate what a massive impact that it had. Sure. Uh, and the thing is, is I, I don't know which one's going to win. I think it's going to be very, very close in the voting. We're we're, we're never going to see. You know, we don't see what the tallies are. But usually, Jeff Keighley will be like, "This is like the closest vote we've ever had." Um, you know, he doesn't actually say what the difference was, but he'll know it like right. it's really, really close. Uh, I feel like it's, it's really, really, close. Really, really close. They only won by 80%, closest we've ever had. <laughs> the, <laughs> I, I think Breath of the Wild's going to win and has an edge just because I feel like it is the most respected franchise. Yeah. Yes. Of the, like, I'm not saying that, this is no disrespect, Mario's massively respected. Uh, but think about it. Ma- wh- wh- which one of those two games is up for family game? Yeah, <laughs> it, it's Odyssey. Like they're considering Odyssey as a family game, a game that you is has a multiplayer mode. But let's be real, it's a single player game. Yep. Um, that you play by yourself and appeals to people who liked the game on the N sixty four. So it's like it appeals to people who are definitely adults now, and it's being considered a family game. Uh, and it might win family game just because it's popular, but it shouldn't. It shouldn't. Now, I mean, it's not even the best family game on the Switch. I mean, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is very clearly oh, the most so accessible good. family game because of local multiplayer. Um, and yeah. you can argue Splatoon 2 should be up there, too. Um, and those both are up there for consideration. So it's like, but Odyssey still has this, this, it's a Mario game, right? So it's got this mantra around it that, oh, it's for everyone. Right. And a for everyone game can't be as good as my Zelda game. It's true, yeah. If it doesn't have um, a tier higher, that sucks because that that shouldn't even be part of the thought process. But it, it subconsciously it is. It's like no, yep. Zelda's like this hardcore experience. Like Mario, that's like everyone plays Mario. 
Um, so, and it kind of sucks. Like, I don't think that should be part of the voting process, but it is. Right. Um, I, I mean, even me, like, I'm I, like when I when I pick game of the year, I mean, Breath of the Wild is my favorite game of all time. So, yeah, yeah what I, have are you bias, I have bias. <laughs> I would pick Breath of the Wild, but yeah. you know, I'm a Zelda guy, I'm not a Mario guy. Uh, but I love Mario too. I just don't love it as much as Zelda. So it's like I have my own bias that makes me pick Zelda. But I, I, I you know, I, I completely, I spent over seventy hours in Odyssey. Um, I've, I've almost, I mean. I'm going to be 70. Whoa, by, nice. By the end of the year, I'll probably have matched my play time between Odyssey and Zelda. Um, so <laughs> I love it. I'm clearly loving it. I have no reason to keep playing it. Now. I'm not live streaming it anymore. Um, I, you know, I'm, I have no work related reasons to play it. I'm just playing it cause I want to play it. Uh, so I understand any and all arguments for both games but I think Zelda is just going to win because of one, uh, just general opinions on who the, who these franchises are meant to be for, um, to the crowd that, that the game awards is catering to. And three, just because, uh, breath of the wild, uh, had this feeling, maybe the feeling has been tarnished a bit since, I don't know. Uh, but I had this feeling of like a transcendent Ocarina of Time next evolution of gaming feeling. And the thing is, I don't think it is. Like Ocarina of Time yeah. has been used as a template for other video games. I don't think anyone's using Breath of the Wild as a template for anything. Um, but it had that feel. So There's also less of a need to make a game a template anymore because we've explored so many crazy types of games now. Back then, a template was needed because games, a lot of games are failing to come to 3D. Yeah, Um, yeah, bad camera work. uh, I've argued forever, there's no way Nintendo can ever top Ocarina of Time in terms of industry impact because um, there's no limitations now. No one needs to be shown how to do things right. Um you know, but that didn't change the fact that Breath of the Wild is amazing and there hasn't been a game like it. So uh, I think that's why I, I think people are just going to view Breath of the Wild as more unique. Is it more unique? Yeah. I don't know. Is it better than Horizon Zero Dawn? I don't know. I haven't played Horizon Zero Dawn. I know that it was yeah, a heavy either. debate. You know, PlayStation exclusive game, Nintendo exclusive game, both of them action adventure. Which one's better? I don't know. Couldn't tell you. I think they're both really, really good. From what I've seen of Horizon Zero Dawn, looks fantastic. And by the way, Horizon Zero Dawn actually has its story DLC coming out with an announcement and a trailer and everything. Nintendo, Ooh, come on, nice advantage Sony there. It looks like really good DLC too. Um, nice. All I can say is, with Nintendo delaying the announcement of this DLC, whether it gets delayed to 2018 or it releases in December, it better be huge. Because they're making us wait again. Yeah. <laughs> so it better be huge. It better be sweet. All right. So let's move on to the next topic. Uh, this is a very interesting topic. Um, just because I didn't foresee this getting announced now. Uh, but yeah. now, granted, technically Nintendo hasn't announced anything. Universal hasn't announced anything. Uh, but this is coming from uh, reliable sources. Uh, that a Mario movie is reportedly being made. A Super Mario movie. Sorry. Got to put a little Super in there. Um, it's it's Got to be Super. It's being made by... Uh, it, it's an animated movie. And it's being made by Universal Studios Illumination Studio. Uh, which is the company that... You know, they're, they're most well known for Minions. Um, mm. And Despicable Me. But they've also made movies like mm. Sing. Which I, I really like Sing. I, think Sing. I didn't see it. Sing's really underrated. Uh, and, and there was one other movie they made that was, that was pretty good. I can't remember. They Zootopia? Make, no, they didn't make this. That's Disney. Oh yeah. <laughs> Duh. Um, and one thing before, before we talk about our feelings on this, for everyone who says, why didn't they hire Disney? Why didn't they hire this company? Be, well, Nintendo has a working business relationship with Universal Studios. Yeah. They have theme parks. Like if they're going to have a Super Mario like themed ride for the show, it's going to be at Universal Studios. So they're going to work with Universal Studios on the movie. 
Um, right. It could literally hurt the relationship if uh, Universal hears, hey, Nintendo's making a movie. Did they use your studio? Uh, no. Yeah. And then they say Disney <laughs> Disney makes a movie for Nintendo. Disney's going to want to release a ride based on that movie. And it, yeah. 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 Oh, like, what it was just not, like, I think a lot of people would have honestly preferred if if the business partnership would have been with Disney. But then you also have the side of the coin that like Disney really owns a lot of stuff. Um, it'd be yeah, nice for them to have some healthy competition. <laughs> Universal is really the only major competition in the theme park world. Um, so, yeah, I, I actually don't mind the partnership with Universal overall. Um, but the question is, are we excited for this show? Uh, yes. So let's start with that. I mean, are we excited it's, it's, for what this movie could be? Yeah, I think so, because as we know... They tried once before, and it was obviously a gigantic flop. Now, there are obviously some people that liked the movie, and uh, they were cool with the new direction and whatnot. I loved it, but but that was live action. Yeah, that was a live action one. But obviously, at that point, they were really gun-shy, and they never wanted anyone to touch it their, their properties ever again for a movie like that. So I think, for one thing, they said... Right away, it was, it, this cannot be a live action movie. It's got to be animated, which is a good choice because we uh, we've seen how dysmorphic Mario is compared to other people. He's he's uh, he's definitely a cartoon character. Sure. And this way, they can also potentially be using Charles Martinet as the voice, which would be great. The oh. voice you know and love of Mario. Nothing. And uh, because they're so gun shy, they're gonna make sure that this movie is at the very least a good movie. Maybe not great and mind blowing and whatever, but they're gonna make sure this movie is not a bad movie. It's got to be at least a good movie, or they're not gonna put it out. Name a good Pokemon or a good Pokemon. Name a good video game movie that isn't Pokemon. That isn't Pokemon. Can is there? Are there ones that like, are animated? I, I, don't, I don't know if you could count Pokemon like. As a video game, like I know it started well, off as a video game first, but it's had a running TV show for. Right, but years. the TV show was based off of the video game. I know that, but like what I'm saying is they had a successful you know I mean? TV show, so because the show was successful, like of course it's going to translate well to movies. They and are going to. The show don't always follow the games either. So are they going to follow through with that that Detective Pikachu thing, I or no they'd idea. let that die? I have no idea. Because <laughs> that was going to be a movie once too, but. Uh, <laughs> I mean, na- name another one, animated or otherwise. That that's good. Uh, the I think the closest we've ever really gotten, which only had some uh, video game licenses in it, was Wreck It Ralph. Sure, I enjoyed sure. that movie. That, Maybe it wasn't movie. amazing, yeah, but that was an original. But it yeah. it was original, but it did have some tie ins. Yeah, it had tie ins. Pac Man, and yeah. it had Bowser and Zangief and but, stuff. Uh, but again, that worked a lot because it was original. It wasn't like based in a single IP. Right, but it, it very much was stealing directly from Nintendo in that Ralph was basically the original Donkey Kong and well, Felix was basically the original like jump man. I mean you you could argue stealing but I mean they they had to work Just with Nintendo. They, there was there. Nintendo characters in the movie. So I, I'm I'm saying they were based directly sure. on Yeah, those it was, characters. yeah, well a lot of our arcade games are based on <laughs> arcade games, so that's why they can get away with that. Right. So what worked about it, though, was that Ralph was, like, the villain, and they gave this sort of soft view of, oh, maybe maybe he's not really so bad. And maybe maybe the hero is kind of a jerk because he's... Always winning. He's a little too full of himself because yeah. he knows he's the hero. Yeah. And that was a fun well. twist on that video game um, trope. And they could do something similar where, I mean, I don't want to spoil anything in Odyssey, but there was something there where I thought, oh, wow, that's that's an interesting twist there, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know why they, they're treating this it. character that way, but uh, they are. And so they, they could very well be doing something in the vein of Wreck-It Ralph in trying to help you connect with characters well, that you don't connect with so much. I think whatever they do, it has to be original. This is something yes. I've argued about with every video game movie that's ever existed. Oh, we're tying it into a game. No. No, don't do it. Games are do made it. in a way that make good movies. They, no. Even if they have a good base story, like you could argue Final Fantasy VII has a nice base to its story that could make for a tragic and epic movie. You're right. It could, yeah. could but it's not going to because it's going to constantly plays be compared to the game. Yeah, it plays better the way it was made, which is yeah. the like, 200-hour version. That story was made to be experienced through <laughs> gameplay, 
Uh, in a very long period of time. The thing not is, two hours. I'm a person that tends to like bad movies. Um, I like the I Super Mario yeah. show or the the movie. I like the Tomb Raider movies. Uh, Enjoyably bad. The Resident Evil movies. Yeah. Um, I liked all those movies. I didn't think they were terrible. Uh, I, I'm in the vast minority because a lot of people be like, "Yeah, they were just okay." I'm like, "Well, just okay is pretty damn good for a video game movie." <laughs> that's fair that is a fair criticism <laughs> like Tomb Raider did well enough to have a trilogy uh, Resident Evil did well enough for like four or five movies obviously uh, they people must did like okay. Resident Evil what people really did like Resident Evil well it was it was an interesting take very interesting yeah. take I, and I feel like they had the, the right actors for it but you know the scripts aren't always the best but it is what but it is unique stories as yeah, well unique yeah I mean, again that like that's the thing like that was able to go on for so long because it kind of had its own story arc yes um, and that's what needs to happen here like i don't know that there's part of the rumor is that like there might be like a planned potential trilogy here but they're not really banking on that they're just going to work on it like we plan for sure. this to be standalone but we have kind of like this framework to continue it which like of it's course a, you have to have a framework to continue it like it's an option in like the contract somewhere. If we make X dollars, then maybe we'll make a second one. Yeah. And like my worry here, a couple things. One, like I, I know everyone in the world wants Charles Matinee to voice everything because he is the voice of Mario and the voice of so many other Mario characters. Mm-hmm. Have you heard him talk in the Mario voice for a prolonged period of time? Yes. It is annoying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but at this like, point like imagine, imagine to, like, a two and a half hour video of that voice yeah but he doesn't have to like talk heavily you know what i mean like it, like again in wreck it ralph it wasn't like F- felix was like always on screen you know no no but he talked a lot a fair amount yeah i mean it and besides that i mean that movie was really about ralph so like when you're right. talking about so a Super saying, Mario movie, Mario it's going to be about Mario. Focused on Mario? It has to be focused on Mario. It's going to have his Does name it? in the title. It's not. This isn't the Zelda series, okay? <laughs> name of the character in the title only appears for five minutes. We didn't actually hear the title of the movie. We no, just heard that no, it was a Super, Super Mario, Mario movie. movie. So it, it could be like Toad's whatever or Pacey's exactly. birthday bash or something. <laughs> Oh yeah, he finally gets the cake. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, it could be a story based on Bowser. We don't really know. Um, yep. My, my my thing is is I'm worried about the movie for a number of reasons. I think the animation is going to be fantastic. Like I know yep. a lot of people are like, oh, I don't like the minions. Or this. What? I mean, the animation is good. You have to at least admit that much. Yeah, exactly. Um, you might not like the story, the script. You might hate the concept of the minions. Hate them. That's fine. You can hate the minions. I mean, <laughs> I feel like how many people hate the rabbits? Right. Despicable Me though was a pretty good movie. It, it is like I I like Despicable Me. I like the, the yeah. second one. I like the third I one. I, oh, I, I I like the Despicable Me movies. The minion movies, yeah, I can pass on those. My kids like them. It was obviously made for kids. Yeah, um, which is fine. Like I get it. The minions are hilarious to children. I understand that. Um. So yeah, I mean, and uh, this is when everyone starts clicking off the podcast. You just said you like to speak with me. I'm like, yeah, so what? I do. <laughs> I also like all this bad Nintendo stuff. Who cares? Um, but my worry is, it's not so much even about the studio. Like they could be, they could have Pixar working on this, or heck, get Marvel involved from Disney. They mm-hmm. they, they could try whatever they want. The problem I have is that movies are about the story. Yeah, and Mario is never not really about had the story. story. So like, <laughs> Mario is yeah. very much gameplay centric. So it's like yeah. you're going to take a franchise that's gameplay centric and make a movie out of that. It could be a very much a movie focused on children, and the story could be very simple. That's completely possible. I mean, but at the like, same time, the silly Pokemon anime when they decided to make a Pokemon movie. There were some really deep and heavy concepts in that movie. Sure. Yeah. It's, you never can tell what Nintendo's going to do. Yeah, but uh, but again, I mean, that's the thing. Like, I'm almost surprised, that, you know, the companies that keep making all the Pokemon games that they didn't go to them and be like, hey, make a Mario. Make a Mario uh, movie for us. But, yeah. Uh, it's, even then, it's just Pokemon has always had a story, though. Like, the show, even though it had some dark yeah. themes in the movie, like, the show is an ongoing story-based Pokemon thing. Whereas... Yeah. 
there isn't that for Mario. Like even back when they had the Mario cartoon show, there really wasn't much of a story. Um, right, no. <laughs> but there has to be because that's what's going to engage people. You can't just have Mario jumping on Goombas going woohoo for like two hours. You can't do that. Oh, um, I kind of like the sound of this already. All right. <laughs> so it's like I, I keep thinking about, you know, the there's a couple of directions they can go. There's a direction some people are going to want them to go, which is to make um, an original somehow heavy story based maybe a side story with a side character that we don't hear much about like Lakito or something um that just oh, goes, luigi oh, Luigi Send some love goes, for luigi would be just great goes super deep and it's just this amazing story whether it's canon yeah. or not doesn't matter uh, and that, <laughs> i think that's what a lot of fans would want versus where, where i think they're going to do they're going to be like look we're making this we're making this animated movie for five-year-olds yeah um so yeah there's not gonna be a lot of talking it's gonna be a lot of um oh. What was Minion that style comedic effect? Made? Like it's being made by a studio that's really good at that stuff, so it's going to be a lot of you know comedic. Like, oh, Mario ran into a block and bumped his head. Ha 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 ha. Yeah, probably. Um, and I think that's going to upset a ton of people if they do that. <laughs> yeah. um, the thing is, like, it'll probably work. It'll appeal to kids, but like, that's not nobody. Like, people that are fans of of this series, that's not what they want. But that's probably what they're going to get. I feel like based on the studio yeah. they're going with, um, based on the fact that Mario has never been a deep story based anything, it feels like it's just going to be one of those slapstick, like children's ha 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 Mario fell ha 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 you shot a fireball and it backfired and hit him in the face. <laughs> like I know, like let's just be, I mean think about it like that's just what what's what it's probably going to be, and I'm not saying that because Illumination Studio can't do anything better. Like I felt saying, oh, oh, story. oh, it's a three stooges movie starring Mario character. <laughs> Perfect. So needless to say, I'm worried about the movie because I, I, I think I'm just worried because I know it's not going to appeal to me. It's going to be my kids are going to love it. And I'm probably going to see it on repeat on Netflix like a billion times. <laughs> if it goes to Netflix, I hope it does. I think it'd be a smart move for Nintendo. Um, Watch it be like old man Mario and how sad and lonely oh, <laughs> um but again my worries for this game really aren't about the animation studio itself it's just about the fact that i don't think mario as a franchise works well for the kind of movie that would actually make mario fans happy because nintendo is not yeah. known for story um and i don't care how heavily miyamoto's involved miyamoto's not known for telling story or making movies i uh, he worked in the pikmin <laughs> shorts but again, those yeah, I didn't see those actually, so I the, It was slapstick comedy, which is fine for like a, a two minute short, not for an hour and a half plus movie. Also, um, did any of those characters speak? The Pikmin ones? No, it was, it, it was all minion kind of comedy. Yeah, exactly. The Pikmin don't speak. Olimar appears to be silent. He has text bubbles. Well, he, he talks. He just doesn't have voice acting. R right, exactly. So did they put it in the shorts? Was he even in the shorts? Oh, my gosh. Um, so whatever. I mean, obviously we don't know if this is happening for sure, but it, it seems a pretty, based on the sources, it seems like it's happening. Um, yeah. but doesn't, it, they said don't expect it soon. So it sounds like, like the contract's still not finalized yet, what they're going to do, but an animation takes forever. Yeah, yeah. It's probably 2020. It's going to be. A yeah. While. Um, the question is that, that I want to follow that up with though, is, is there any other Nintendo franchise that we think should be made for a movie? Maybe even after or in addition to Mario. Sure. I think an easy follow-up in that same sort of child-friendly style would be a Donkey Kong movie. Uh, not necessarily what I would want, but I think that would fit that same sort of silly slapstick kind of movie. Well, what would you same... want? What would I want? Definitely Metroid, but my fear there is that nobody's going to be able to do that well. So as much as I would want an awesome Metroid's Metroid tough. movie... Right. Then again, they pulled off the Castlevania show. They they did, but that yeah, that, I mean that again, was sort of an anime. Show. That was a show. Yeah. That's not a movie. Uh, and that was four nice, episodes too. The nice thing about a show is you get a lot more time to, yes. to build out everything than you'd usually yes. do in a movie. Uh, movies have to have. I mean, unless it's a planned 
series, like like Lord of the Rings trilogy kind of thing, where okay, right, you you have key points, but you know it like this is like a twelve hour experience, mm-hmm. um, especially with the extended editions. So oh, probably more goodness. than twelve hours with the extended editions. Yeah, I think so. Because I think like every each movie is like five hours long with the extended. It's edition. ridiculous. And you know what sucks? I still haven't seen the extended editions, and I love the Lord of the Rings movies. You know, that's all that we have now on on Blu-ray. And I kind of want to go back to the standard editions because every time I want to watch it, I'm like, but I don't have four and a half hours to watch one. I, so I just want to do it once. Just one marathon. <laughs> like one weekend, just eat up my whole day and, and sit down and watch it all because I love those movies so much. They're so good. <sighs> they they were. Like the Hobbit movies were okay, but they were a far cry, which they were going to be. The Hobbit book was not, right. should never have been split into three movies. No. Uh, there just wasn't enough in there. Like if they condense it to... See, that's one I could have said, like, oh, if they did, like, a four-part show, like, on HBO or something, that could have worked really well, versus three movies. I was going to say two movies, but I'm like, eh, I don't know. Anyways, um, man. Metro would be really awesome sci-fi, but it would, so but I just don't know. It's another one of those that really until like other M there really hasn't been a lot of deep story per se. It's like, well, there, I mean, there, yeah, there, is, there yeah. is story, but like, like but a lot of it's this... like isolation by yourself, which can work. We see movies that work right. that way. So like, there's not like, there's not isolation movies, especially like in the horror genre. Yeah. Um, obviously alien, which, which is, you know, based on could, could be an alien style yeah. film. I mean, they could do a sci-fi horror thriller isolation kind of movie. Yeah. Um, it, it, Metro would be perfect for that. Like, those movies exist. I'm not saying that this can't be done. It's just... Hmm. Yeah, what happens when she opens her mouth? That's what everyone's worried about. Well, and she we has don't to. want to hear about she the baby. To. And she has <laughs> opened her mouth in the series. So, like, she has to open her mouth. Um, yeah, she has to. And, yeah. and, of course, you know, depending on who the actress is, I mean, you'd obviously have an idea what they're going to sound like anyways. Um <laughs> You know, right. and then there's like which act- actress that fits that role, uh, would they take it? Blah 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 blah. Um, yeah, it, it's tough. I mean, to me, I want Scarlett Johansson like in every female role ever. So, <laughs> but because that's not going to happen, probably. Um, I, it, it's tough for me. You know, I've talked a lot in the past about Zelda movies because of my time at Zelda Informer. Uh, and how much I really want a Zelda movie or a Zelda show. Like when that, mm-hmm. when that rumor came out about the live action Netflix show, I was yeah. all about that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I was all over that. I know. Oh, but Link doesn't talk. Who cares? Link's going to have to talk. Link actually does factually talk in the games. I wrote an editorial yeah. on this that I'll probably have to make a video about because people still keep telling me how much of a silent protagonist he is. And I'm like, guys, it's a gameplay gimmick. Yeah. He actually talks in the game. You just don't hear him. Yes. Like when they say, oh, what's your name? You think they just figured it out? He yeah, told exactly. Them his, his name. It's like, oh, you're Link. They didn't just be like, oh, yeah, I know you. No, they've never seen him before. I read your mind. <laughs> it's not tele- There's not telepathy going on here. He yeah. talks. You just don't see it because it's, it, 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 it's actually a very well uh, known and not as common as it used to be, but it, it's a well known gameplay design to make right. you in your head feel like you're the character. So like also like, not oh, waste your, your time name? in your head. You're saying, Oh, I'm Link subconsciously. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. It's a gameplay gimmick. He actually does talk to the characters in the game. Um, right. Uh, even though it is funny in breath of the wild, like in, in Zelda's diary that they <laughs> kind of makes fun of, like he doesn't talk much. It was a little bit awkward. It was like camera focused intensely on him. Yeah. Any normal person would say something. He's completely silent. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Hey, like I don't, I don't know. Does he like me? He doesn't talk much. Doesn't talk much. He didn't say he doesn't talk at all. Just like yeah. noted that like he's so focused on something, that, like he right. doesn't open his mouth in a lot of situations. Um, and I mean, yeah, that, that was arguably what was cool because it kind of to me. I know there's always that debate over is Link a character or is Link you? Um, like that to me, like oh, Link's very clearly a character because they're portraying him as one. Like he's squarely focused on this task and it's so monumental that and, and you you get that in the diaries and everything like how monumental everything is to like like the pressure that's on him um that he's so scared of screwing it up that he doesn't want to say the wrong thing that could just mess up everything um ah. very like very intense if you guys haven't experienced that in breath of the wild 
I highly suggest you start going around and reading all these diaries, um, the King's Journal, uh, Zelda's Diary, uh, the diaries at the Observatory. Um, there's a lot of deep lore with Link about like his mm. character and the kind of person he is, and um, especially from Zelda's perspective, like the immense pressure, like as much pressure as Zelda is under, like Link's at like this whole different level. Um, right, because she's looking to him. Yeah, and, and everyone and, like, else he and, like, yeah. and like how his silence actually speaks to the strength of his character because um, it's so hard in the situation he is. There's so much pressure on him that, you right. know, yeah, he could say one wrong thing and it all, everything's done, poof. And even in that strength, you know, he, they still a lot. And like, like the loss and how Link probably blames himself for the loss mm-hmm. because of all the champions died and um mm. like it's actually if you look into the lore like this is where you get a lot of the lore of it like you get some of it and you know in that stuff but you get the really deep lore in the diaries you sort of realize breath of the wild is a really dark story but yeah like, link um it, it's not like in ocarina of time where like link is oh i released i released ganon uh it's my fault like i i gave ganon access to triforce and the sacred realm blah 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 um it's not like that kind of deep or it's like oops that was a mistake this is more like no Link had a lot of pressure on him and he failed everybody. Yeah. Um he didn't do it on purpose. He tried and he failed. He could not win the fight uh, for yeah. whatever whatever reason, you know. And, and it's weird because Link's actually more powerful at that point than you could argue. Like you can go beat Calamity Ganon at the beginning of the game and you're a lot less powerful than Link was at that point. So it's just really interesting the dynamic there how like how why Link failed. Um right. And like the death of all the champions, and like his close relationship with Mifa, where Mifa was in love with him. Uh, obviously, that's not happening if Link's not opening his mouth. Um, and that's why everything failed. He opened his mouth. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> um, just I don't know. I I feel like I obviously love Zelda, but like there's just so many dark undertones there. Um, that just I cool. feel like it could make like a really cool movie, but yeah. It's the question of do I trust anyone to to get it right? Like the reason I was excited about the Netflix is because Netflix has this reputation with their series of just they know what they're doing, exactly. Um, and they would treat the IP with such reverence and respect, um, that they would probably nail the casting since they've seen the nail always nail the casting. And it's probably mm-hmm. not going to be. It might even be like someone for Link and Zelda and Gan. It might be people that you wouldn't think of and you think are bad fits until you watch the show and you're like, holy crap. They knew what they were doing. Like, like you can't judge the picks for the show until you know what they're doing with the show, right? Because um, the show could very much fit whatever that whatever actor and actresses they picked. But that's not what we're talking. About. We're talking about a movie. So if you're talking about a movie and it's not like a Netflix movie, um, then and the thing is, like, that's not the not Netflix movies. Netflix movies are basically just as good as like going to the theater. Um, for the most part, you, they haven't, I don't think there's been any like super big epic movies. Uh, but they a lot, make of, a lot, lot of, of B-tier movies, movies, mostly shows. Uh, they have movies, a lot of B tier movies. Um, you know, to give you an example, all those Adam Sandler movies they have. Um, oh yeah. Like, like, like very, oh, yeah. very B tier movies, not bad movies. Like, like, uh, probably the most high profile one I think that I can think of from this year anyways is death note. Um, Oh man! And there's some people that like it, some people that don't. The people that generally like it are the ones that like didn't know what it was before the movie. Yeah, um, like me. <laughs> as much as I, oh. love, as much as I, I'm such a nerd in this stuff. I, I, I've heard of Death Note, but I had no idea what it was. Oh. Um, so then I watched so the movie, and I'm like, you know what? You know, after I heard some of the complaints, I, I started looking looking into it a little bit. I'm like, okay, I see, I see what why people who are fans of like of death note and all this stuff like why they didn't like the movie but then you know i went back and rewatched the movie and i'm like that's the movie's still not that bad it's just it, it's yeah. I don't, it wasn't made to appeal to those people it was made the, to make pro- death note more mainstream yeah um, the problem is exactly the same with death note is what we're talking about where it's such a masterpiece of a creation yeah. how do you get somebody to make it in a totally different medium and a different style and not royally yeah, and basically screwed. i think they knew going into making that one that they weren't going to be able to please yeah. Um, so they're like, can't. look, we're not going to try to. We're just going to make this appealing to a different audience, and it worked. Like, it's got yeah. really good reviews on on uh, Netflix and everything. So, like, people who watched it, uh, who a majority of people don't know the history of Death Note, like it. 
Um, right. And I think that's I think that's okay. See, that's the thing. I think like whatever movie they do after Mario, even Mario itself, it's okay if I don't like it or if you don't like it or like people who are deep into the lore of the stuff don't like it. As long as it can find its own audience that it works for and it works very well for. Like the big thing we have to remember with movies and TV shows is that when it's a translation of video games, we always think as gamers it has to appeal to us. But does it? Because so many people they're going to go to have never played these games. They saw the trailers and think it looks cool. So I mean, yes and no, because if we say it doesn't have to appeal to us, essentially that means we've given up on trying to get a movie that we'll like from that franchise. Well, it's a little sad. I, no, <laughs> but I don't say true. giving up. I, I don't say giving up. I, I think what I mean is that we're talking about the original takes, right? The the high the high risk with the original takes is that it could potentially not appeal to us. Like say, uh, say they they made a Mario movie, like they're like they're apparently doing, and it's got this really deep, intense story that Mario's never had before, um, and we don't mm-hmm. like it because we don't feel like it fits with the Mario franchise. But then you have this whole other side of it where you have these people that they know what Mario is, but they don't really play the games. And they're like, this is a really good story. And like, I can't be mad at them for liking it because I didn't. Like, what did I expect? Um, it, it's... The thing is, is I almost wondered, like, does the movie really need to... Like, I don't want to say give up on something appealing. Like, the Castlevania show, very good. Um mm-hmm. You know, appeal to me. I, I'm not even the biggest Castlevania fan, and that's the thing. Does it appeal to me because I'm not the biggest Castlevania fan, or does it appeal to me because I know enough about the series that it lined up well? I don't know. I, I didn't. I didn't go to other Castlevania fans and be like, "Hey, did you like this show?" Oh. I don't care. It, it's like, well, like I didn't know the Super Mario Bros. show was bad till other people started telling me it was bad. I'm like, really? I like it. <laughs> uh, the Zelda cartoon series that's supposed to be bad. Really, I liked it. <laughs> so it's like I understand there's obviously different tastes out there but it's the problem with any video game movie is you have to remember it's never going to appeal to everyone uh, and the moment you can accept that you have to realize what are we trying to do are we just trying to make a good movie or are we trying to make a good movie that also appeals to the people who play the game because so I think there's two separate things yeah. I think the Death Note movie on Netflix is a good movie but it's not a good movie that appeals to Death Note fans so yeah. what what I think you can't really get both spec like I don't think we've gotten necessarily a good movie that also appeals to fans of that. Like so, like say the Resident Evil movies, which are maybe the best movies out there, like for a video game adaption original story. A lot it's of Resident action, Evil yeah. fans don't even like the movies. They just appealed to a crowd of people because they were good they they were decent to good movies. Mm-hmm. So it's like that's not really an example of a good video game adaption either. If you're talking about one, that's a good movie that also appeals to the fans of the franchise. Um, sure. It's like tomb Raider. Like my dad loves the tomb Raider movies has never once played a tomb Raider game. Um, so it's like, okay, that, I mean, that's totally fine. He, he is welcome to like this. I don't know. Maybe he likes it because of Angelina Jolie that beats me, but um, it, it's <laughs> like when I think of like a, a Nintendo IP, like whenever I think of what Nintendo franchise translates well to a movie, I always think, well, it's got to be a, an IP that's heavy in story. Um, you know, you can think of games like Fire Emblem. But, oh, yes. It, but is Fire Emblem a big enough franchise to want to make a movie out of? Um, uh, I'm going to throw another weird one in there. Like I keep bringing it up. F Zero is kind of known for its weird characters and yeah. sometimes having a story. Sometimes. <laughs> Emphasis on the sometimes. Yes. I mean, it has a kind of, sort of. It has. It has a story. It's just. Yeah. No one remembers the story. <laughs> it's so, I remember it's so the there. GP Legend on GBA. There was like a oh story for each character that you played, mm-hmm. and they were like interlacing with the other characters. Oh god. It was kind of crazy, but it's like they they took time to build the lore into this racing game, like a lot of it. <laughs> All right, so we threw some examples out there. Obviously, uh, for our listeners and viewers out there, feel free down in the comments. Let us know uh, what games you think would make good movies or shows, live action, animated. What studios? We're not going to dive into like, oh, who should we hire for actors? Because let's just be honest, 
we could all make our dream cast for whatever movie we want, but we're not movie directors or movie writers or movie creators, and that cast might totally fail. In fact, when you think about a lot of dream, like our dream casting where you put together like your your favorite celebrities for certain roles, how many mm-hmm. of those movies that smash together a bunch of celebrities actually work out? Not very many. Sometimes you have too many stars for the roles that they play. Um, uh, it does work in a thing like Avengers, but again, they all have their individual movies. Um, that kind of build yeah, but that. And arguably they universe. weren't really all big stars before Avengers. You know, you know what I mean. Um, you know, there was a couple of big names. I mean, Scarlett Johansson was already big. Scarlett Johansson and, was big. Samuel L. Jackson was big. Uh, yeah, Downey but he was Jr. like a smaller character. Robert Downey Jr. was big. Yes, but yeah, that, that's that's about it. And the other main characters well, weren't really uh, big before then. I always forget the name of the guy. The guy who played Captain America. He was in some. Some bigger. He was he was in some stuff, but he like he wasn't some, like he was a big, big name. Just the movies themselves bombed. Like prior to Avengers, people wouldn't have been like, "Oh yeah, Chris Evans, one of my top favorite celebrities." You know what I mean? I mean that he was just a smaller name out there that was in some cool movies, like Scott Pilgrim, one of my favorites. Oh, it is. Yep, yep, he was in there. Ah, uh, I'm trying to think of who are the, I'm trying to think of the other actors and actresses in there. Um, obviously the guy who plays Hulk. Was it wasn't a big big well I mean the, I was every whole movie they've ever made is tanked so yeah um but it works in the Avengers which is fine yeah the Avengers is definitely the best Hulk movie made so far <laughs> yeah uh yeah I, I guess it's one of those um yeah I mean I I'm just thinking of things like yeah Chris Pratt's kind of a big deal but was he a super big deal before Guardians of the Galaxy happened and Jurassic Park. It was like, right. I, I knew of him, you know, but I keep thinking like, did he really have any super big role to make him like, you know, he's still not even now, Parks not on the level of Robbie Downey Jr. Like Robert Downey Jr. and Scarlett Johansson, like those were the two, and Samuel L. Jackson, like those three were kind of like, these are mega stars. Yes, exactly. Um, mega stars. And, uh, you know, and that's what kind of helped the whole Marvel thing is I think they kicked it off with Iron Man. Um, yeah. And I mean, duh, you have a movie with the, I think all three of the big big studs were in that movie. So it's like, OK. And, and plus it helps that it helps that not only was Robert Downey Jr. like a big star, like as soon as they said he he's Tony Stark, it's like, yeah, he is. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's so like well. that's the one like of dream casting that it's like every movie you've ever seen him as he's Tony Stark. Yeah, <laughs> there is no other. That's the thing. Like when they talked about, oh, his contract's gonna be up, and we have to replace him. It's like, you, you, no, you you can't replace him. Yeah, at th- at this point, I don't think any of the main Avengers can be replaced. Um, It'd be tough. You know, like Chris Evans talks about how he wants to be done being Captain America, and it's like, eh, yeah, but that's fine if they retire Captain America, but like you can't, right? Ever bring in another Captain America? Not not like you'd have to reboot. Not the whole Steve series. Rogers. It'd you'd have, you'd have to be have a to different reboot. character. Yeah, you'd have to reboot the whole franchise, and you're not going to do that for like 20 years. So, because you got to give enough time <laughs> b- between reboots to bring it back. Yeah, um, they'll probably fill the time in between with some of the smaller superheroes. Yeah, it's not like the Spider-Man or the Batmans where like they reboot. Like those ones are normally rebooted. Um, like the Black Panthers and the the Doctor yeah. Stranges. Yeah, and that's what's nice is I feel like they're ones. expanding into those more. Um, yeah, and even the you know, Guardians of the Galaxy itself. You know, I mean, they're, yes, they're, they're expanding. The, you know, they're bringing in other parts of the universe. I think to take some of the pressure off of having. Okay, we have to have another Iron Man. We have to have another. Thor, even though Thor just came out and is so far as the highest reviewed movie of that whole of of, of all oh, of the Marvel really? movies. Yes, it was <sighs> the highest rated. I haven't even seen it yet. I haven't seen it either. I, I hopefully I'm hoping to get to it this weekend. Um, but because I've just heard nothing but good things. Like I've heard that okay, it's a there's a little bit like a little bit too much comedy in it. Um. Which, you know, to me seems weird, but then I'm like, yeah, the only movies I really expect comedy from are Guardians of the Galaxy. Because that's just, that, that's just the way Star-Lord is. Um, yeah. But it, but he was like that in the comics, too. So it's like, that's just his personality. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Tony Stark has always kind of had his, his, his own kind of comedy to him. Um, but that's about it. Yeah. I don't expect, like, Thor to be comedic. 
Like he's not that comedic at all. Yeah, he's almost like <laughs> so, too serious. So I think that's probably why like there's a little clashing with the way Thor has been, even though he's had some moments, you know, and, and like it's all the Avengers moment. have had their moments, but like he's had his moments, but like apparently he, there's a little too much of it. And so, but like when that's the only complaint and everything on top is like, dude, this movie's amazing. I'm like, okay, well you're telling and, me it's better than a, than the Avengers movie, so I have to I have to see it now. And I was gonna see it anyways. I was gonna wait <laughs> to rent it, but I'm like, well, nope. Guess I'm going to another Marvel movie. <laughs> and, and I actually think Chris Hemsworth is super funny. Oh, he can be. He can be. Um, I really enjoyed him in Ghostbusters. I thought he was the funniest person in that movie. And I know that I, we're talking about something that's totally unrelated, not to Nintendo, but it. Yeah. I gotta. Changing. I gotta say, early Justice League review is not looking good. Really? No. Oh boy. I'm gonna see it tomorrow. So. Not not we'll looking see what good. What happens? We'll see. It's one of those things that I think it. People are going to view it as better than what it's reviewed because that's usually the way it goes. Um, yeah. But they're still going to be it as like, yeah, that's not. It, it didn't work like Avengers did, which yeah, honestly, it probably shouldn't work as well as Avengers because there's so little. Like Avengers had had. Oh, let, me, let me think. Was it Iron Man, Thor? Um. Iron Man, Thor, Captain, Captain America. America, Black Widow, Hawkeye. Yeah, Hulk. yeah, but 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 I, I mean they had. Um, a successful Iron Man, successful Thor, successful. Even though I know some people don't think like the, the Thor movies were that good until this new one. Um, and then a Captain very America, Captain the first America, one was like, me. Yeah, two of those three movies be super, super successful before they ever released a Avengers movie. Yep. Um. So like you already had hype from having good movies leading into this movie versus like wonder woman's all the hype in the world but like batman versus superman wasn't well received <laughs> no you know, suicide squad it was wasn't not. well received so it's kind of that like, one uh, i disagree on suicide squad well, personally i'm not saying that it's bad i, I, I know suicide i know squad. it was really bad well not it, it well just received. Wasn't received very well right um it, so, like, i don't think there's gonna be another one I, no i don't think so but, either but i think that's that's sad it, it is sad I, I thought it was pretty good um, I yeah. expected it to be absolute trash, and because my expectation was that low, I came out thinking, well, dang, yeah, that's, that was pretty good. <laughs> dude, I tell people they should – I was just having this conversation with my fiance the other day. Um, guys, I have this this outlook on life that if you notice, I like a lot of things that people think are bad. Um, I used to have high expectations of things in the past, and I got I was let down so much that I started to hate life. It was a kind of depressing. Oof. not just of movies like of everything in life like high expectations of even myself and getting down on myself for like not achieving what i felt like i could have achieved mm-hmm. um like i could even i can even argue now like oh i don't i don't make enough money off my youtube channel at the end of this year to live off of it i'm a failure i should quit but that's not my outlook on life anymore a lot of this happened th- you know through therapy and stuff i went through in the past when i was clinically depressed but um my outlook on life now is pretty simple, and it's why a lot of people think I'm so laid back. And maybe it's why some of you guys love, love me on this channel so much. Um, my outlook right now is I expect everything to be terrible. I expect, like, the worst possible <laughs> situation for everything out there. Like, I must say, like, I wasn't, like, I don't get hyped. I was hyped for Odyssey. I was hyped for Z- for Zelda. But the ba- in the back of my mind, I'm like, yeah, but these games could be terrible. Like they're taking big risks here, and it could just not work. So yeah. back in my mind, I'm like, yeah, like high reviews, all the hype, but I kind of had that that tinge thought that it could be bad. And when it ends up not being bad, or it ends up not being as bad as I fear, I end up starting to think it's good. You know, there's yeah. a lot of things in life that everyone says, "Oh, this is really, really bad." Then I go watch, I'm like, oh, that wasn't that bad. And that's kind of the way my life goes. Like even you know, even now it annoys my fiance. It's not just come home and be like, "Man, this house is trashed." I'm like, "Really? <laughs> you know how bad this house could have been?" <laughs> so like, we have a house. I mean, come on. Like this doesn't bother me. <laughs> uh, I was living out of my car like eight years ago, and now I have a house. Okay, the house might be. Well, I'm sure, the dishes aren't done. I guess. I, if that's our most stressful thing of the day, we're in a pretty good life. <laughs> Yeah. Um. So it's kind of it, it's one of those situations where I start viewing everything that way. Like when I make a video, uh, this is a fun fact. Every video I make, <laughs> that's so funny. This people. Every video I make at Nintendo Prime, 
I don't expect it to get more than 100 views. Now, I should expect it to get more than 100 views at this point. I should be downright disappointed if it only gets 100 views. Um, (laughs) Because I realize right now, most of my videos are going to get over 1,000, to get 2,000, get 3,000 views. Occasionally, one will blow up. I know that. And I'm not going to say I've never been disappointed with things in life. Uh, There's videos... You know, that I thought, oh, well, you know, it'll do it at least a 1,000, and then it only did 500. And I'm like, oh, crap. So I'm not saying that I never get down on myself, but it's so infrequent because my expectations are just so low. Like, even when I say, oh, yeah, I just expect this to get a 1,000. And most of the time when I think that, oh, it's going to get, you know, four, it ends up getting 4,000, 5,000. Um, I'm not saying that this makes me an extremely happy person all the time because I'm not, but I'm content. Really, really content a lot. <laughs> Um, and I think that's the way I am with the bad movies or even bad games where I'm like, yeah, like, like Battlefront 2, like the reason that upset me so much early in the podcast, um, isn't because I had super high expectations per se. I just have a strong desire for a good Star Wars game. And I was hoping that this would be the one, but I, I expected it not to be good because of the loot boxes, but I was still, you know, one of those, but I want it to be good. And when you want something maybe... that's so bad. Or maybe it's good if I don't buy loot boxes anyway. Yeah, it, well, yeah. right now it's for me. Once the bugs are ironed out on the versions that I played, okay. Like I'll probably think it's it's a good game. Like like some people always get mad at me. Like, oh, how do you not get mad about loot boxes? I'm like, I I get mad about that stuff. I think it sucks in premium games, but I, nothing I say or do is going to prevent it from happening. Um. The reality is there's enough people that spend money on that stuff that it's going to exist. And you can say, oh, speak with your wallet and just don't buy the game. That's fine. They don't care if I buy the game. The people that are going to spend money on that loot boxes are going to buy the game. So they're going to exist no matter what. There's nothing we can do about it. There's literally nothing we can do about it. There's no amount of speaking with my wallet, you speaking with your wallet, that's going to prevent it because there's too many people that don't, don't care. Yep. So it's because true. they don't care, because they're going to spend money on the loot boxes, because I say this about people, um, and I guess we could we could say that we're transitioning to random time right now. Um, <laughs> I'll say this: I say this about people. Uh, we right now, like the, probably our primary audience at Nintendo Prime, we grew up during an era of gaming that was vastly different than what my kids are growing up in. Um, oh man. I grew up before smart devices. I grew up before we, you know, not that loot boxes have not, you know, weren't around way back then, but they were really, really rare and they were called something else. Um, you didn't have them in a lot of games. There, there was no DLC. Uh, a lot of you guys that are like teenagers watching this, you guys grew up with DLC and stuff. I didn't grow up with DLC. Um, I grew up with yeah. expansion packs. And yes. That was, and that was yep. primarily on PC games. That wasn't even so much on like console games. Uh, if there was something new for console games, there's no internet connection. So you would just get a, new, a sequel to a game. Um, so I didn't, that's why I, when DLC first came in, I, I wasn't as mad about it because I'm like, well, consoles have internet now. So I've been experiencing this on PC forever. This isn't new. It, was just call, it wasn't called DLC. It was called expansion packs. Um, right. And expansion packs were pricey. Uh, they were like 40 bucks. But they contained a crap. They contained a crap load of content, um, and that yeah. started becoming an issue. Is that some of the DLC you'd pay like twenty bucks for, and it would only be like an hour worth of gameplay, and you're like, okay, was that worth it? I'm like, ah, probably not. The infamous horse armor. Oh. <laughs> so, I, I kind of always say this is that everyone's growing up in different eras of gaming. Uh, the people that are growing up in gaming right now, like my kids, uh, they're growing up in the smart device era. And they're growing up in the freemium era, which means that a lot of games they're going to experience throughout their lives are going to be on smart devices. And because of that, the popular thing on those smart device things are microtransactions, loot boxes, and ads. Because that's how a lot of those games are free to try, as I like to say, and they make money through all these other means. Uh, So they're growing up in an era where loot boxes don't really feel that bad. Uh, Microtransactions, that's just part of gaming. So when yeah. they, if they get to the point where they finally buy a dedicated video game device or they own a PC and they buy a video game for it, um, they're not like, oh my God, this game has microtransactions and, and blah, 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 even though I paid 60 bucks. like that, That's not even a thought that crosses their mind because they grew up in an era where that's every game they've ever played. Sure. 
So when every game, like my kid, like my four year old, let me tell you, he might be the best Angry Birds player in the world. <laughs> oh my god, can that kid play Angry Birds like a beast? I there's no way. Like if we were in an esports thing, me against him in any version of Angry Birds doesn't matter. You know, in, any of like the traditional Angry Birds, not the puzzle uh, stuff. He oh, would right. destroy me. He is so good. Uh, and that's the thing, like that game full of microtransactions, full of uh, little ways that it kind of pickpockets you and wants money. Now, he obviously doesn't have, you know, he's just playing up to the, the free point he can. Because uh, I haven't, you know, I was thinking about maybe for Christmas buying like full versions of some of the newer Angry Bird games for him. Um, but again, that of course supports that model. And that model's not going anywhere because the companies obviously a lot of a lot of companies release games on phones only a handful end up being really successful but when they find a success like an angry birds or a candy crush or flappy bird or whatever the case may be like it's not just a little success it's multi-billion dollar success on one game yeah it's um, crazy and that's why like like even arena of valor coming out like massively popular under a different name uh on mobile devices in China, making Tencent a billion dollar company off of one game. Uh, that's the thing. Wow. Like, it's not going anywhere because even though it's hard to be successful, if you become successful, you're instant. You're instantly like a Nintendo or an EA or an Ubisoft. Like you instantly have that kind of cash flow. That's so nuts. That's why that market and that design's not going anywhere, and that's why. And, and there's plenty of games like I, I play uh, like Tap Sports Baseball. I don't know if they make billions every year, but they make enough to maintain the MLB license. They make enough to keep releasing a game every year, uh, and that's pretty intrusive and has loot box like mechanics in it and microtransactions. It's it, it's a thing where this is the era people are growing up in, and a lot of us will be like, yeah, but those are in free games or like one dollar games. But that's not the way the audience going up. They just said that's that's what what, that's what's in games. That's not what's in free games. That's what's in games. When they see that there, and then they come to buy a a forty dollar DS game or a sixty dollar game, you know, or a twenty dollar you know indie game or something, and they see that same mechanics that they're used to anyways already in those games. It's just that's just the way gaming is, and we can hate that direction. We absolutely should hate that direction. Yes, we should. (laughs) But. It, it, this is where when some people say they have grown out of games, it's usually because gaming has changed. Right. And maybe that's just what's happening now. The new generation is coming in new way of monetizing. I'm not saying you should accept it. I'm not saying you should like it, but I'm saying that's the way gaming is going and there's nothing you could do to stop it. You could try as hard as you want to desperately stop it, but it's making billion dollar companies out of no name people. It's not going anywhere. Yeah. So because of that, because of the, you know what you might call a sad reality, you could just be growing out of gaming. Or gaming's growing out of you, however you want to look at it. You'll always have your classics to play. but And you should play them. You should. But, but that's kind of where I'm at with, uh, with, with that. And that's why like, I don't get as upset about microtransactions, about loot boxes, because like, I know that that's where gaming's going. There's nothing I can do to stop it. I couldn't stop DLC. Not that I wanted to. I wanted to stop some of the bad DLC. Uh, but like I always say, like, dude, when they do DLC right, it's awesome. I mean, The Witcher 3, that's DLC done right. Mm, but, not yeah. every game, but not every game does that, right? You know, what, what they're doing with Zelda, we're hoping it's DLC done right. We haven't really seen, like, the main part of this season pass that was supposed to be worth the money. Um, yeah. We're hoping it's worth the money. I assume it's going to be worth the money. But we don't know yet. Like, I, I bought it blindly on faith. Like I like Zelda, so I'm gonna like it. Me too. But like, it is when I think back on it, I'm like, but was that really worth twenty dollars? It might not be. But they got my money anyways. If they keep delaying it. You might not want to come back if it's been like a and year. It's always funny like, when I hear people say, "Oh, what well, Nintendo does DLC right?" I'm like, they have in the past. I don't know if they're still say, doing it right. You could. It depends. What's right to you is selling individual characters in Smash Bros. Sounds a lot like Street Fighter Five. Yeah, no, that that one I wouldn't say was the right. But it worked, and they made a ton of money, and they're going to do it again. And it also wasn't the worst approach because I I totally bought characters. Well, that's I to- that's I loved thing. like that's some of the, the classic the levels. And stuff. The the thing is, you can say is it not the worst approach, or is it you accepted it because it's a game you like? 
Like when people I mean, complain about this stuff, they usually complain potato. about like, oh, <laughs> I don't like Call of Duty. So like the fact they're charging for zombie mode or for this and that, like that's bad on you. Or I don't like EA, so bad on you, bad on you. But if it happens to a game you like, you're just like, hey, whatever. It's good. I'm glad they're adding that character. Whatever, yeah, whatever it takes it, to inject that game into yeah, me. If they, if they didn't charge <laughs> for it, the character just won't exist. That's the excuse yeah. now. Like, I... Well, why should I be mad at them? Because if they didn't charge for it, when have we ever gotten new characters and added after the fact in Smash? I'm like, you're right. You're right. You're you're completely right. Um, but ARMS gets new characters added for free. Yeah. Like, I think oh, the oh, only oh, DLC... Other games that they add characters for free. They add you know new items for free. But in Smash, no, because Smash is popular. Smash has a, a, an ingrained audience. They know they can abuse that Smash audience. And sell characters and sell maps like they know they could do. They're literally doing what these other games are doing that those same fans will chastise for. But yeah. it's a game they like, so they defend it. Um, and and that's I mean that's just a general thing in gaming that happens a lot. I can't tell you how many times I've had people tell me how much better Nintendo is, and I'm like I'm telling you, give it three years. Nintendo's going to have loot boxes in one of their games if they don't already. I think the only thing that uh, really had good DLC was Mario Kart Eight, the original Mario Kart Eight. Yeah, sure. Because the game that you got was a full-fledged Mario Kart experience Mon- with the same number of yeah. tracks that you always expect. Same, yeah, yeah. Good, good amount of characters, good amount of, like, the same, yep. like, it was literally what Mario Kart's always always been. Yep, it's, it was great. And, and, and then you they could argue, doubled it. I mean, you can argue there's been, you know, I'm not going to say, like, they, they've never had good, you know, quote-unquote, what people think is good DLC. I mean, even Hyrule Warriors was highly touted as, hey, that DLC was pretty jam-packed. Mm-hmm. And I get that. I'm not saying they don't have good DLC, but I'm also saying that it doesn't mean that everything they do is good. Um, right. You know, Fire Emblem Heroes. Yep. That's very much exactly what most mobile games are. And it's that's basically them, loot boxes too. It, it, it's making them way more. Yeah, loot box, there you go. Example, they already have a loot box game. I, you know, I understand it's on phones. People think that's more acceptable, but Fire Emblem Heroes is making them more money than any other mobile game, but Pokemon Go. Right. And Pokemon Go is like the most popular mobile game to ever exist. So like comparing to that, it's pretty difficult. Yes. But like it's more popular than Super Mario Run. It, I mean, look, look at Animal Crossing mm-hmm. Pocket Edition has microtransactions. And you can argue, oh, but the argument is, oh, the microtransactions aren't that bad because uh, you can get most of the stuff with in-game currency. Isn't that the exact same defense everyone says about every game of microtransactions? You can yep. get You can get the currency in-game. Yep, it's the same thing. It's, it's literally the exact same thing, but because you mm-hmm. like Animal Crossing, because the game looks good, you're just saying, oh, whatever. doesn't yeah. matter. Now, besides yep. the fact that most people, even if you're not the person, like you have the patience, because Animal Crossing's always kind of been a game of patience. So like you have the patience to wait and try to get everything in game, even if you find out it's impossible to get everything in game without buying currency. Um, you have that. You have that kind of patience. Well, guess what? Most people that play mobile games, like the white whales, they don't have that kind of patience. They're just going to buy the currency and get their stuff now. Yeah. Uh, and Nintendo's going to run events that's going to make people want to do it. There's going to be like a weekend only event that you can only get X item on that weekend. And that's going to encourage people to buy currency because you're not going to be able to earn enough currency. Yeah. Um, to, to get those exclusive items. Like they're going to do it because Animal Crossing already does it. They just don't charge anything. Um, Yep. You just miss out on the item. Well, people aren't going to want to miss out on the item, so they're going to spend... Like, Animal Crossing is very much going to be exploitive, um, but that's also the way games are now. And w- when you look at Switch, um, Nintendo hasn't done, I guess, anything so far with a Switch game that's too terrible, but it's also year one coming off their worst console of all time. They need to build goodwill. Yeah. And that's what they're doing. They're building goodwill, uh, which is why I think the, the Zelda DLC is going to end up being good because they're going to want people to think all their DLC is going to be good. Uh, and it's probably not. Smash Bros. is probably going to come out. They're going to charge for characters. Uh, yeah. Fire Emblem. <laughs> Fire Emblem. Like Everyone's excited about, oh, Fire Emblem on the Switch. Have you seen the microtransactions in Fire Emblem on 3DS? That's on 3DS. There's microtransactions and DLC all over that game. Yeah. Granted, I can argue you don't need to buy anything to have fun. I, I don't I haven't played Fates, but I played a lot of Awakening, which had some of this paywall DLC stuff that I hated. Um, I hated it when I saw it in Dragon Age, but whatever. 
And then when I saw it on fire, I'm all like, really? Nintendo's doing it now? And I hated it yeah. then. But there was plenty of people like, oh, it's not a big deal. It's, it's just $4 here. I'm like, yeah, it's $4 here, $4 <laughs> there, $5 here, $10 here. Next thing you know, you just spent over $100 on a $40 yep. game. So it's like, on a $40 game. But it's yeah. acceptable to you. Oh, the content's good. It's acceptable because you like it. The same, the same yep. excuses you're giving for why it's okay there are the exact excuses for people who like the other games and say it's okay there. It's Stockholm Syndrome. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> it's... I don't know. I know I'm just going on a little rant here about it, but it's just this is why like I don't get upset about this stuff because I'm like, look, if I find it acceptable in this game, then why am I complaining about it being in another game? Right. I think it'd be an interesting experiment if a company released the same game two different ways. Like, hey, if you really don't mind microtransactions in Animal Crossing, like you say, then you can have this free version of the game with microtransactions or if you actually do care about these microtransactions and you don't want them here's the 40 dollars version of animal crossing which one are you going to buy up to you i think we would see once they have the choice not to have microtransactions they would choose not to have them but because they don't have the choice they think in know. their mind oh this is fine these transactions are okay i don't, I don't think so you don't, don't remember, think so, huh? No, like, like maybe you would be that way or I would be that way because we'd see, oh, man, it's going to be so much cheaper just to buy the game. Like, we'd do the math and be like, why would you play the free version that you're going to have to spend more money on long haul versus today's society is growing up where, dude, they they see a $40 price tag versus free to download, $40 to download. They're getting the free version. Yeah, I guess. Thinking, oh, I'll only spend five dollars on it, well, they, or they might just they think don't. they're never going to need to spend money. I'm just going right. to be able to beat it without spending money. And if it is, oh, it'll just be five dollars here, five dollars there. It won't be a big deal, like you just said. Yep. But like that's the thing. That's those are the games people are growing up on right now. So when they grow yeah, up on that experience, it's like this is why some people say, oh, video games are too expensive. Well, factually, video games beyond the microtransaction, like just the base price of video games, is cheaper than it's ever been. Right, uh, considering inflation. Yeah, considering inflation. And then it was like, oh, well, considering inflation, that's a bad argument. No, it's not. No, it's and completely it's a very valid. Good argument. 60 bucks. When I bought, like, Ocarina of Time for 60 bucks back when I was a kid in the 90s, yeah. oh, my God, that's uh, 60 bucks. That's 60 bucks. With inflation today, I'd be able to buy, like, five different games. I, I have a worse one for you. I, as a kid, was an unfortunate soul who looked at a game and thought, oh, that's got to be fun. I'm going to buy it. And it was $80, and it was Superman 64. Oh, <laughs> I, I heard it. So you said $80, bucks, i am like, oh, my God. Superman, the Superman. I remember the launch of that game, Superman. Oh. Uh, and then you're stuck with it because you're a kid and you don't have income. So you're like, yeah. well, I have to play this game. A lot yep. to Doesn't matter how bad it, it is. I got to force myself to play it. Yep. Uh, it's thing is, like, that's like, and, and nowadays, you know, we do have indie games and cheaper stuff that weren't necessarily, like, even B tier games back there were 60 bucks. Uh, yep. Whereas now, like, you know, you'll have Sonic come out for 40 or whatever. Um, yeah. Which. That's a 20 game, You can argue, game, you know, that. It's, I don't even know if it's 20. I don't know. I, you know what? I haven't played it yet, so I'm not, I'm not going to judge until I try it. I know I'll try it eventually. There's really good fan service, and that's that's the best thing about the game. You know, I mean, sure. it's going on sale on Black Friday, so I'm, I might take bite the bullet then just to try it out for 25 bucks. Sure, sure. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It just kind of, I guess that's my my random time topic I wanted to bring up is just uh, that I guess I'm less bothered by a lot of this stuff because I've seen the way the industry is going. I understand why people are upset about it. And I understand why I'm like, I, 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 in my little star Wars video, you know, I complain about the loot boxes, but I, that's not really my primary complaint. I want to com- If that was the only issue with battlefront two, I would have never made the video. Uh, because I understand why companies are doing it. Um, easy allies actually recently did a podcast where they had, uh, this lawyer message in from, from Hogue, whatever, whatever company it is. Um, and he basically said that, like, especially in the West, uh, legally companies are required to implement this stuff because they are a publicly traded company and they have um, a financial responsibility, basically. There's a legal term for it. I forgot what it's called. Uh, it's like a fiduciary huh. responsibility or whatever to their stockholders to do whatever would make them the most money on their investment. Basically, everyone that works on oh. the board 
they all what what they really are are like investors for your money. So you get sure. you trusted that board with your money by buying stock and their job as the people who you entrusted your money to with that stock is to return to you as big a profit as possible on your investment. Mm-hmm. And yeah. if they did not do that, if they did not explore loot boxes, if they did not do X, Y, and Z to maximize profits, which is clearly working in like the mobile space, if they did not do that, you could be sued by those stockholders for not doing your duty to maximize profits. That stinks. And because of that, <laughs> and you could be like, oh, well, those greedy, of course they're greedy. They invested in the company to make money. Yep. I think people forget. I've been bringing this up a lot lately, it feels like. Video game industry exists to make money. Yep. It's an entertainment industry. It's I don't know what it is about it that people seem to think of the video game companies like their friends and, oh, they're looking out for me. You know, they're they're trying to add the features that I want because exactly. and, and I they like their so fans. I much with Nintendo fans. And, like, <laughs> I'm, I'm as big a Nintendo fan as I come. I've literally covered Nintendo for a living. But yeah. it's like... I realize that they don't care about me. Mm-mm. They don't care about you. They just want my money. <laughs> yep. <laughs> like, like, oh, well, this Super Mario Odyssey is this love letter to... Um, it's a love letter to get people to get their wallets out. Yep. They're trying to build... I just literally said, why aren't we seeing as much DLC and microtransaction stuff with current Switch games from Nintendo? Because they know they need to build up their reputation. Yeah, their goal right now is just to sell as many switches as they can. Once they do that, you're going to start seeing the Smash Bros that's charging for characters, the Fire Emblem that's charging, you know, for little micro DLCs throughout the game. Those games are coming. Heck, don't be surprised if Pokemon does it after the success of Pokemon Go. Hmm. Don't be surprised if Pokemon on Switch has microtransactions inside. You want the best Pokeballs to guarantee uh, your catch of that legendary that you only is going to appear once per year. Mm. You better spend money and buy that Pokeball. Nasty. It, it, don't be surprised. It's going to happen because it's profitable. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And people will be like, oh, it's not that bad. You don't have to. You're right. You don't have to. But that's that's the excuse. That, again, everyone gives. So it's just. I, I obviously passionately get angry about this stuff, but I also understand. I try to my best to always understand the business side of things. This is an ever-evolving business. Gaming budgets are getting bigger than they've ever been, consistently getting bigger. Even at Nintendo, as much as I talked about how Nintendo is really fiscally responsible, their gaming budgets today are still massively bigger than they were 20 years ago. Uh, so yeah. even like making a game like you know the, the new Yoshi and Kirby game, those games are more expensive to make than they were on the Super Nintendo. <laughs> Uh yeah. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. Like, like yeah, the budgets are still relatively small compared to most games, but it's still relatively huge compared to what it used to cost. So, like, yep. even for Nintendo, the games are more expensive. They just manage their budget. No, they just manage things differently, um, which is very, very smart of them. Which is, you know, I made a video about that. How a lot of Western studios should start looking at how Nintendo structures their company. Um, in terms of not laying off a bunch of people and hiring a bunch of people for like three months. Um, I don't know how well that would work in the West, obviously, because a lot of people like those contract jobs and blah, blah, blah. blah. There are benefits to contract jobs like that. Um, right. A lot of personal freedom. Sometimes you can even sign multiple contracts, work at multiple companies at once. Um, it's kind of crazy. But I just think that people need to... Realize that this is a for-profit business. Um, all these companies are doing are looking for the best way to monetize their games and make the most amount of money they possibly can. This includes Nintendo. Uh, like when people are like, "Well, if Nintendo just cared about money, they wouldn't make hardware anymore." Nintendo's stubborn. In their history, they have made more money off of hardware than they've ever made off of software. So to them. Mm-hmm. Hardware is the key to making the most amount of money. Now, we could argue there's evidence out there like EA and Ubisoft where you can make more money just making software, but Nintendo doesn't know that internally. We know how stubborn they are. Just look at their online system still. Like, we know how stubborn Nintendo gets. So they keep making hardware because they view that as the most profitable way uh, to build their business. And as much as you want to argue against it, right now Nintendo's worth more money than Sony. 
Yeah, that's crazy. So, company that does one thing yeah, worth more like, than company like that does a more lot. Than Sony. They're not going to be worth more than Microsoft, but they're worth more than Sony. It's like you know, all oh, Nintendo should get out of the hardware business. So, well, should Sony get out of the hardware business? <laughs> right. What's that about them when they're worth less money than Nintendo right now? Of course, I'm not going to say that because well, PlayStation is their most profitable venture right now. Guess what? Nintendo Switch is Nintendo's most profitable venture right now. <laughs> Same yeah. argument exists for Nintendo right now. Uh, so it's just crazy to me. Like, I don't know. I'm a, and here's the thing. I'm not going to tell you game developers don't care about games. They, they want to make good games. I'm not going to tell you that Reggie fils doesn't want people to enjoy Super Mario Odyssey and don't right. want us to enjoy Zelda. Don't want us to enjoy Arm. Like, they want us to enjoy the games. But the point mm-hmm. of our enjoyment is so that we spend money. Yes. You got to remember, they're not giving us anything for free. Like, oh, well, they're giving us free characters in Arms. But you bought the game. They're just enticing you to keep playing the game so if they release an arms to you buy that right it's like when you see something cool on the internet and then like a bunch of people post that uh oh man i'm gonna anger people gif or gif i'll just put them both out <laughs> there of uh fry doing the take my money um that's what they want out of you they want to show you something cool and then see that your reaction is i, I don't care how much it costs take my money give it to me i can't tell you how many zelda special edition systems and bundles that i've shared at zelda informer over the years that i have seen that that gif thrown up like yeah or meme you know whatever where it's like take my yep. money take my mom throw or, or even that like I, I keep throwing my money at the screen and nothing's happening and look how many people get upset <laughs> like oh my gosh i couldn't get the pre-order in for the amiibo screw nintendo i couldn't get my pre-order for the special like that's what they want they yep. want you clamoring for literally everything they release everything's about making money yeah um and that's why like these multi-billion dollar companies don't need you shilling for them. Um, and I know it feels ironic because I'm I'm, I'm Nintendo Ruffle Jansen from Nintendo Prime. I rely on Nintendo doing well for the popularity of my content. Um, or if they're doing bad, uh, doing bad in a way that I can criticize them without pissing off every Nintendo fan out there. <laughs> um, which is basically impossible. I, I pissed off tons of fans and I don't care. I've driven away a lot of fans from my channel uh, because people think I, I'm a Nintendo hater. Um, then people think I, you know, I'm all up on Nintendo's jock. And then there's some of you guys out there that recognize, no, I praise Nintendo when they deserve it. I criticize them when they deserve it. I, I try to be as even keel as I can because Nintendo owes me nothing. Um, a lot of, a, a lot of, our, I think our treatment out there comes from one, we want to justify our purchases and two, we feel entitled. We have to remember, it's not just that video games is a for-profit business. Video games are a luxury item. They're not something you need to survive. (laughs) They're not clothes and a coat that keeps you warm in in the winter. It's not shelter. It's not food. You know, it's not an education that can help you support your family. It's a completely optional thing in life that nobody needs to survive. Like movies, like watching TV. You know, why do some people not, not have cable and... But, you know, but way back, I mean, a lot of people have Netflix now, but even before that, why, why did so many people just not have cable? Because it was expensive. It was a luxury item. You don't need it. You only got it if you could afford it. Mm-hmm. But that's the same thing with video games. It's a luxury item. To have access to video games, to be able to purchase video games, means that you're in part privileged to be able to get those games. And that's not a bad thing. It's really not. And I'm not saying like, you know, you're privileged like, oh, you're you're living a high life or whatever. Like, I don't live the greatest. So I paycheck the paycheck over here, man. <laughs> um, it just so happens that video games are why I get a paycheck. But um, I'm paycheck to paycheck. Like, technically, if my job wasn't video games, I wouldn't be buying a lot of video games. But thankfully it is because I, I love video games. I somehow turn my, my hobby into a job. But... That's, that's not that's not the path for everyone you know so i i think just sometimes we have to put everything gaming as a whole in perspective why companies are doing these things uh why i'm not saying you should care about it but why no matter how much you complain it's not going to matter all of us that are complaining grew up in an era that is t- totally different than what teenagers and the new youth are growing up in today um and stop like when you want to defend Nintendo for their DLC, but you'll criticize other companies, just stop. If you think it's bad for other companies, it's also bad when Nintendo's doing it. 
And I think that's just where I'm going to leave it. Like, let's just, as a whole, let's stop shilling for companies that don't need, like, praise them when you think they deserve praise, but then don't also praise them for things you criticize other companies for. <laughs> right. That I think that's what bothers me the most about, like, oh, that's just the fanboys. Like, then my entire channel is fanboys. Right. <laughs> because, like, they'll, they'll literally be in, like, like, how many people right now have been like, oh, I can't wait for this DLC for, for Breath of the Wild. They will turn around and bash DLC for other games. It's like, right. Well, why is it okay for Zelda? Again, talked about before. You like that those games. You want more of it. You're basically proving the entire point of the existence of these systems on other games. And eventually, uh, there's a lot of people that like the loot boxes in Fire Emblem Heroes. They like how that works. So it's like, yeah, yeah. But you're going to criticize it in Battlefront 2 and Overwatch and all these other games, but it, on the side, we're doing it in Fire Emblem Heroes. Yeah. Again, when you like something, it's suddenly okay. So I don't know. That's kind of where I'm going gotcha. to I'm, I'm end my topic. Do you have any random topic you want to bring up? I know there was something you want to talk about. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I feel like it has like maybe a little bit of a laugh from a previous topic, but. Okay. Something that I saw today, I just thought <laughs> was so utterly ridiculous. So we were talking about video game movies earlier, and one game I definitely would never have expected to become a movie is a game where you are a monster and you race to destroy buildings the fastest. And turns out somebody somewhere thought that was a really good movie idea because Rampage is becoming a movie starring none other than Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Unbelievable to me that this is a real thing that's actually happening. I'm not surprised. I'm surprised the choice of game. It's just it's one of those things that I think they know. It's just like Mario, like they know it's going to be bad. Oh but, my! But they're hoping goodness. it's one of those like cult movies, where like for some people it's just so bad it's entertaining. It's like something that doesn't have any substance at all. It's kind of a shallow arcadey style game. Yeah, I mean yeah. They're, they're obviously going to create some substance. Like they showed uh, oh. in in the trailer. I mean, obviously whether you care about the substance or not, it's up to you individually. But like in the trailer for it, they showed like uh, I don't even know the name of his character, so I'm just going to call him Dwayne Johnson for now. Yeah. Um. Show him, you know, get it, getting in a relationship with the ape, um, and and having these these deep feelings for him. Probably that say, he, he, like rescued him <laughs> and saved him and raised him. I'm like, I yeah. get it. Like that's a that's a cute story, but that's fine. Um, that that's how he's involved because the thing gets injected. It's also with the, the new and, stuff and like goes, goes or doesn't get injected, but like falls off a plane for some reason. Yeah, one of those. Just, oh, it just accidentally fell off a plane, and now everything's mutating. But when we touch it as humans, nothing happens. Um, this is pretty much exactly Planet of the Apes, though the the, the reboot with uh, yeah. James Franco. Yeah. It, it's basically <laughs> basically Planet of the Apes. You start, um, but I, I don't know. I mean, I was watching the trailer and I'm like, this is absolutely ridiculous. And then I'm like, but I have to watch it. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I just, yeah, like, it's I'm, such I probably won't pay to watch it, but yeah. I'll probably watch it. <laughs> it, it it's it's a, such a ridiculous premise for a movie. Like, it is not <sighs> the kind of game. And then, like, I, I'm as I like, get done watching it, and I'm like, you know, you know, if they were gonna, <laughs> if they were gonna make a rampage game into into a movie, why not go with Redneck Rampage? <laughs> Shooter, funny, Hicks. Maybe they can't do it because of stereotypes these days. I don't know. But I, at least there's like some substance there that you could try to make a story around. Like, there's no substance to... I don't know. That's yeah. Funny. It's not... Here's the thing. We just talked about video game movies before. It's not going to be a good movie. You No. There's, just, there's nothing <laughs> they can do that'll make it... Uh, at least... Again, this also gets back to what we talked about before. Like... There is good movies for people who like the video game. And then there's just good movies for everyone else. It could end up being like one of those good movies for everyone else. Um, like, I think the reason it's coming out is because of like Kong, Skull Island, blah, 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 movies like that. Um, yeah. Clearly. I also think it appeals to the like Sharknado like sure, clientele, sure. you know, the people that like the ridiculous monster stuff that doesn't make sense. Well, I, I mean, that's the thing. It is ridiculous. It doesn't make sense. Uh, at one point, they're like, uh, what? You mean you didn't hear about the 30-foot wolf? 
It's like, yep. of course. Yep. Of course, the 30 foot wall's not there. Jean, oh, course, Jeffrey oh, Dean you know, Morgan. You know what we need? Yeah, and then, even the rocks is like, oh, of course. You know what we needed? An alligator. <laughs> It's just like, yeah, and it knows. It knows it's a, a ridiculous. Like that's the thing. As long as it owns what it is, I'm okay with that. Like if it's trying to be a Sharknado, that's fine. Like I know Sharknado is not widely considered a good movie, but it knows it's not a good movie. It's trying not to be yeah. a good movie. Yeah, I would argue. Like, as soon as soon as like <laughs> as soon as Dwayne Johnson's like, yeah, that's what we need an alligator. It's just like okay, this movie knows that it's a bad movie, but it's okay with it because it's trying to it's trying to be one of those so bad it's good kind of things for some people and it, it might get there you know i i haven't you know it's just one trailer who knows it could get there a bunch of monsters destroying the city is what it looks like right now what a surprise yep um i i i don't know I, i'm gonna watch it the thing is like i have not i'm one of those weird people i've watched i've not watched a Dwayne johnson movie yet that i haven't been at least mildly entertained by Oh, cause he's good. He oh, he's good. Like yeah. I know some people are like, oh, it's doing. He's the, I'm like, uh, he's good. He's like a legit good actor in multiple roles. He um, got to be a legit good actor. He didn't start. No, that he way. didn't start out that way. <laughs> um, you know, he was just a muscle guy in some movies, which is fine. I mean, that's basically all he was good for back then. That's all but, Schwarzenegger was good for. But, but then and you look his at funny the, accent. But then you also think like, well, he had to have some acting, like decent acting ability that showed early. Because he's still like the most popular WWE character of like all time Mm -hmm. with The Rock. And that's all acting. Granted, the WWE is well known for its bad acting. But like the characters that become most popular are the ones that are actually decent at acting out that character. Right. Um, Like like Stone Cold Steve Austin, another really popular one. Yeah, because he was all, you know, F the establishment. But he was it was a role. Yep. And he was really he good well. at playing that role. And, I, and that's the thing, like, Dwayne Johnson's really good at playing The Rock. He still plays The Rock. He still signed on with the WWE. He still makes appearances. Um, that's cool. And, and he's the highest paid actor in Hollywood last year. Probably again this year, too. That's so cool. Well, it's because he's in so many movies. So many. And I think it's like, I watched the Baywatch movie, finally. And I'm like... Oh, yeah? I'm like, here's the thing. Like, it's... I understand why it reviewed poorly. It's not Baywatch. I don't know. They might as well not call it Baywatch. Yeah, um, but the thing is, like, if you go back and actually watch the original Baywatch show, it's not good. It's it, nothing at all. It's, it's, it's just not. It's watching. not good. People watched it because <laughs> it was adolescent kids watching boobs bounce on the beach. Okay, and then yep. there was David Hasselhoff, who wasn't the greatest looking guy in the world, and we all thought, "Hey, we could be him." <laughs> I'm just being honest because I watched Baywatch, and that's why I watched it as an adolescent. It was Pamela yeah. Anderson before the boob job, and then after the boob job, I thought, yuck. Uh, <laughs> and, like, the, it, literally, you were watching it for the chicks. It, I mean, basically what it was, was a soap opera made for men. Yes, um, completely. And it wasn't a very good soap opera. Like, as I, I don't got even older, know I a single thing watching, that actually happened in the show. Like, as, as I got older, <laughs> I started watching some some other soaps out there. Like, I'm not saying, like, oh, my God, I, like, my mom used to watch soaps, right? So, like, I knew about it. Oh, yeah. Like, like, Days of Our Lives and blah, blah, blah at the time. Yeah, yeah. Which I think Days of Our Lives is canceled. I think most of the soaps have been canceled at this point. Probably. Um, I don't know why daytime soaps died out. It'd be interesting to actually look into why that's happened. But uh, one of them that I think is still going on was General Hospital. Um, mm-hmm. And I watched, like, a couple seasons of that, and I'm like, you know what? This is way better than Baywatch. <laughs> that's probably why this show is still running and they watched it not but i'm like like there's actually like decent stories here and good acting and yeah all the chicks are basically hot but whatever they're not like just eye candy like they can actually act um, right so it's just like it, it was just a very interesting uh perspective when i thought back on baywatch and i'm like yeah, you know the virtual baywatch really wasn't that good so should i be surprised that the movie itself um is just okay no I'm like, and then I think about it, I'm like, I actually think this movie's better than the OG Baywatch anyways. Like, I went back and started watching, uh, like, the first season of Baywatch, and I'm like, this really isn't that good. It's literally, <laughs> you're just watching it for the chicks. Yep, that's So I'm it. like, this isn't that good. And, like, they have hotter chicks in the new movie. They have Dwayne, who can actually <laughs> act. They have a story that's actually semi-entertaining. Uh, and they have, like, a real villain. And, yeah. This actually works. And the action scenes are better. Is it a dumb story about another 
you know, here's a guy, and then here's the here's the stud that comes in and expects everything handed to him. You know, those bro stories. Yeah, of course it is. It's corny. Been there, done that a zillion times. But it's still way better than, than the OG show. So I don't know. Like I said, I've never seen a Dwayne Dwayne uh, Johnson movie that I haven't at least enjoyed in part. Um, right. Even that one that uh, I forget what it's called, the one where the uh, they had the uh, oh, uh, earthquakes. The tore apart California. Um, I forget what it's called. Uh, it was, I actually really enjoyed that movie too. And I think it's like, oh, you can't remember what it's called. You must not enjoy it. I'm like, well, I only saw it like twice. But it, it, it was pretty good. And uh, his daughter, or like the, the girl who plays his daughter in that movie, is actually also in Baywatch. Um, hmm. But yeah, it, it's just uh, yeah, interesting. I don't know. I mean, for, for Rampage, yeah. like, uh, you know, is it like uh, if it's on Netflix, I'll watch it kind of thing or what? Yeah, I think for me, yeah, if it's on Netflix, I'll probably watch it. Yeah, but uh, and in and the, there's certain actors that you'll watch no matter what. Like you said, Dwayne the Rock Johnson, absolutely. Uh, same thing with Robert Downey Jr. It, oh, I don't yeah. think it matters what movies he's in. And if you watch him for, only, he's just such an amazing actor. Yeah, for you're gonna very enjoy his different reasons, right? Like, yeah, like Dwayne could be like serious and like this big muscle guy, but he can also be funny. Yes. Um, like when he did that movie with uh, oh, what's that? What's his name? Oh, I'm so mad I can't remember his name now. Cause he was in a bunch of movies for a little while, and now he's been gone for a little bit. Um, oh, details. Man, it, they were <laughs> help both, me help you. They were both uh, like like uh, The Rock was a was a guy in the CIA or whatever. Um, and the other guy, it was a a person of color character, a short guy. Talks really fast. Oh, man, why can't I? I'm really mad at it. I really oh, oh it. was that was that Kevin Hart? Yeah, Kevin Hart. Yeah. What yeah. was that movie? Yeah. Oh, it was so funny. He was like an accountant or something. And like this. Oh, yeah. Big, what big was that? Oh, it was such a funny movie. I actually own the movie, too. I don't know where, where it is, but I actually like own like an actual Blu-ray of it. Um. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's such a good movie. I've seen it like a dozen times. And I can't remember the name of it because I don't care. It's just a good movie. Um, uh, like they work so well together, and I like Kevin Hart. Like Kevin Hart's funny. I understand why some people can get sick of him because like every movie, it's the same character. Like I think The Rock has a wider array of talents than Kevin Hart for acting, but yeah, dude, I can't help it. I, I just like Kevin Hart's character. It's just like it's kind of like Jim Carrey for a lot of years. I just oh, like, I just like Jim Carrey's character. I'm not saying he can't act like when he did the the number 23 or whatever it was. Um, yeah. Like that was a serious thing. And like, I thought his acting was good, but the script was bad. So it's like Truman show Truman had show, some very serious Truman moments. Show had as some well. Very serious, but also some comedic stuff, but yeah, very Lots serious of comedic stuff. Yeah. Like I, I the think he's got the ability. I, I just think he's, uh, he's kind of cornered himself where people only really care about him. If he does those kind of movies. I think he's done. I don't think he want, is interested in, in being that guy anymore. I don't know. I mean, they, he did just do uh, what the the new Dumb and Dumber movie. That's not that old. Yeah, well, it's maybe older than you think. It's, it's several years old at this point. Isn't it, didn't it just come out like two years ago? Two, maybe three. It, it was a while well, he's, ago. He's kind of like Will Smith. He doesn't do a lot of movies anymore anyways. Um. I don't even know. I'd have to see if he's even working on another movie. Yeah, I don't. I don't think so. But it's you never know. You never know. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm I like. I know. I know he was not happy with his character in Kick Ass Two. Oh, I never saw it. It's, it's not on as good list. as the first one. It, I think it's still a good movie, but it, it's kind of one of those where like it was built around the girl, and she's getting kind of old now to to, to be that cutesy kid that's just kicking everyone's butt Mm -hmm. um so it's kind of like okay what do you do then um but yeah he uh he had a big falling out after that movie like he was not happy like he tried to sue and like get his stuff cut out of the movie and he lost because he signed a contract Um, oh and i I think i couldn't even figure i can't remember what the controversy was over why he didn't want to be in that movie anymore but uh Huh, I didn't know any of that. Yeah, it, it, I, I can't remember what it was. Something about it decided him out. I don't know if it was like a political thing. or I'm, I'm not sure what it was, but ever since then, he's kind of like vanished. I mean, he was, I mean, yeah, the, the, the newer Dumber Dumb movie or 
Dumber and Dumber Two or whatever it was called. Um, yeah, well, well, it was uh, well, it was fine. I mean, it's just them yeah. playing their characters again. I feel like that was a special engagement though, because it was one of his. Well, it's a movie that like those two characters made it. Like, they're, they're, you can't replace. Yeah. It. They tried. They tried the younger no. version in a movie before, no. and it didn't work. No, it's like no, you there those. Uh, like it, it's one of those roles where like those are once in a lifetime roles. No one can yep. make that work but them. No. Um, but yeah, I don't and know. Turns, yeah. I mean, Jim Carrey's made a lot of money, so it's not like he needs to worry about money anyways or anything. Like that. But, <laughs> right. <laughs> but, but so it's like one of those. I feel like, I, I like I said, I think it's kind of like Will Smith. Where Will Smith just pops up once in a great while. Um, uh, he popped up for a, he Smith. popped up for a little bit for like a three movie run in one year when he was trying to get his son into acting and like get him to get his own yeah movies. yeah. But then, like after that, like um, he kind of vanished. I know he, you know, he was in Suicide Squad, obviously. Uh, Best Will Smith movie in years. God, he was really good in that movie. <laughs> it was, was basically a Will Smith movie, he, and I was he, okay he, with he it. He was good, but like, I like the thing that upset me was uh, I still haven't seen the new Independence Day movie. I'm sure it's terrible. Don't. It's it re- so bad. It reviewed really bad, but I'm just like, you can't make that movie without Will Smith. No. And they tried to explain it away, and it was like, but like I, like I saw, the heart I saw and soul. Like the first like ten minutes of it or something, and I'm just like, no, I'm not buying it. Like I'm not not just because I really want him in the movie, just the explanation for why he's not in the movie. No. Yeah. No. It's pretty like, dumb. He like that was like basically Will Smith's coming out party after Fresh mm-hmm. Prince. Mm-hmm. Like Fresh Prince was really really good. Independence Day is what made his movie career, and it's like right. You can't come up with another Independence Day and get rid of basically the lead actor. Yes, you have some of the other leads that were in it. That's great. That's good. They need to be there. But so does Will Smith. He's the primary person that needs to be. You could have cut out the former president. Yep, you, you could have cut out Will Smith. Um, but it's because Will Smith didn't want to do it. So it's like, and, and to his credit, Will Smith was probably correct in saying that. Hey, look, like that's like a one-time movie. <sighs> Should yep. be a, a sequel to that, even though you understand why there could be because if aliens came once, they obviously can come again. Um, there was potential, and they just did not capitalize. Yeah, it would have been one of those like if they were going to make a sequel, they probably should do it back then. Um, rather then than the TV. ending was so nonsensical. But yeah, again, I didn't see the movie, so again, my expectations are for it to be crappy. So it's probably slightly better than crappy. So I'll probably end up liking it. It's just not the same with Will Smith. Um, <laughs> they. They literally have like the resolution to beating the alien exact same thing from the first movie. Yeah. It was like really cheap. Yeah. Like what? Come on. <laughs> so you'll, you'll, you might feel a little gypped if you end up watching it. Like really? You couldn't come. Couldn't come over. You had to reuse the same idea over again. Yep. What? You mean like the force awakens? Oh, see, I'm in disagreement <laughs> on that one. <laughs> is this getting into the I really really like this versus I really really don't like this so using the same formula again does it matter no, I think it was more thematic in Force Awakens than overt as it was in Independence Day yeah see I haven't, the thing is like I can't even comment because I haven't seen Independence, the new Independence Day movie so I don't know I obviously don't know what it's like all I know is I came out of that Force Awakens and be like that was really really good you know why it was really really good that was a new hope all over again yeah, in, <laughs> I mean, in some ways. Basically, well, and then I'm like, and then uh, I remember talking to people like, well, is that a good thing or a bad thing? I'm like, well, the movie was good, so I guess a good thing. So it's a lot like one of the best move, sci-fi movies ever. Oh, yeah, that sounds like a tragedy. Well, <laughs> no, well, it's one of those like, you know, that was one of the main criticism of it. Was like, are they out of original ideas that could be just as good as the original ideas? If they're just going to, you know, like that was the fear for this trilogy is they're basically going to be like, okay, so the first movie was, was basically a new hope. Second movie is basically Empire Strikes Back. And the third movie is basically Return of the Jedi. Yes, they're all going to be really good movies, but you're just repeating the same story tropes over and over and over again. Um, and the thing is, we don't know that. I was, yeah, hoping, but- I was hoping that the first movie, I, I loved it, by the way. I love Force Awakens. Um, I'm hoping that like they did that on purpose because they just had a trilogy of Star Wars movies yep. over the past decade that weren't very good. Yep, um, exactly. And so what they needed to do is go back to what made the, the, the series good to start it again. Yep. And that this movie coming out now should be where it veers off. 
And I feel like we're in the same discussion uh, of like the microtransactions. Just because it's Star Wars, you're treating it differently. But if it's another movie that you enjoy that is also recycling plot points from yeah. other movies that well, you that, enjoy, then you don't care. And that's a point I was bringing up. I'm like, I, I will care if this movie that's coming out now, The Last Jedi, literally is Empire Strikes Back. Right. If that's what it becomes. Because that's what it felt like they were setting up. <laughs> If it, it ends like with Ray missing a hand and it's like, like well, we'll catch him in the well, next it felt, one. It felt like they were setting up Kylo Ren to start up a, a, like an Empire Strikes Back kind of movement. Because, you know, they just got, they got this big defeated loss. Obviously, they have to strike fear again. Empire Strikes Back. They, the bad guys win. Blah, blah, blah. Like, it feels like that's what's being set up. But we don't know. There's been some interesting plot points in there. Um, But are those plot points different enough from, you know, from the prior movies? I don't know. Like... I felt I I'm, I wasn't accepting what Force Awakens was per se for rehashing the story. I was more like I understood why they did it. So now it's up to them to do something original off of that. And if they don't, then I'm going to be like, yeah, they're still good movies, but they really don't know how to tell a story that's not that. And then, we'll see you know, because they also announced that trilogy of completely I mean, separate if you think about it you know i love the zelda series but i mean you play one zelda game you played them all <laughs> as i just upset a whole bunch of people no yeah but they're all different look at them. i'm like <laughs> most of the zelda games from ocarina of time through even skyward sword you know if you ignore motion controls basically the same kind of setup the same kind of gameplay yeah same but if that's story. that's true of so many games you strip yeah, away the graphics the art direction and it's like so it many is. games the thing is like, just like, like the other ones that's the thing, like is it okay for star wars to rip off itself of course it is they can, right they can always rip off themselves it's just sometimes you, you wish that there was more you know um mm-hmm. and they you know obviously they tried some of the og ideas with the, with the the prequel trilogy and wasn't very good don't know if it was the script or the story or just George Lucas just too full of himself. Yep. Um, because there's a lot of story behind like, yeah, George Lucas is the creator of Star Wars, but like his original trilogy that blew up so big had a lot of heavy editing and a lot of other people uh putting their fingers in it to make it good. Uh, sure. Because he had he had like a lot of really good ideas, but how he put it together um at the time wasn't necessarily viewed as good uh and the final product ended up being fantastic so he gets all the credit which is fine i mean he is the founder of star wars he should have credit but um a lot of stuff has come out about the history of star wars and how is there should be some more credits better around than just george lucas yeah even though it was his original ideas um and his like it's funny how too like he gave he gave disney the script for the for the, that he had for for these movies and they're like yeah no <laughs> like, no sorry and it's like yeah you know that uh maybe he it wasn't just him when uh <laughs> when disney takes a look at, oh you created the movies you figure we should care about your script nah, no we really don't we're not using any of it we're throwing it out entirely doing our own thing like have you seen our marvel movies we know what we're doing yep <laughs> Like, we know how to make Star Wars great again, as they say. And the thing is, I don't even know if Force Awakens <laughs> and this upcoming movie are any better than, like, the trilogy. It's oh, just that they're yes. so much better than the prequels. Oh, like, sorry. I, like, I was thinking of the prequels. Sorry. Yeah, like, Disney has... Disney kind of has this carte blanche where they don't have to be better than the original trilogy. They just have to be better than the no. prequels. Absolutely. And they, that, they that's all that good, I require. a good Star Wars taste in our mouth. Yes. Um, that's and it. that's what Force Awakens did. Like to its credit, as much as you might want to argue it's just ripping off a New Hope, it left a good taste. Um, yeah. I know there's a lot of people who don't like Kylo Ren, and, and th- I mean that's fine. He shouldn't. He's the villain. You're not supposed to like. But like, I that's know true. that like there was a lot of respect for Darth Vader back in the eighties. Um, there's a lot it less hard respect to that. for Kylo Ren right now, but that could change in this movie, and that could be a difference here where Kylo Ren isn't Darth Vader. That's the whole point. Kind of, the the actor there, Adam Driver, he was so good though. Well, oh, he was good. Uh, it just oh, a man. lot of people didn't like the characterization of Kylo Ren. And I don't know why, because oh, I feel like everyone yeah. is like, 
Oh, he's super emo. He really wasn't that. Well, it's just want, exaggerated. It's from the SNL they skits. They their new Darth Vader. And but when you the, watch that the, is rehashing, which is what they I were just getting well, upset with the movie about. But, but you, watch, you watch the previews. <laughs> Before you watch Force Awakens, just watch the, the trailers. Kylo Ren kind of looks a little bit like Darth Vader. It's kind of right. Being, it's, it's supposed to be. In a B, B, a. That's why I say thematically, yeah. it's. Yeah, that's why. That's why I said that. I'm like, as much as it, it, the setup of that was a lot like New Hope, what gives me hope that this is a different direction is Kylo Ren wasn't Darth Vader. Totally different, and totally different. I mean, he wants Finn, to desperately be Darth Vader, but Finn kind of had the Empire Strikes Back ending it in Force Awakens, where he is. He's in a bad condition. He clearly lost the outcome there. Even if overall Rebels came out ahead, mm. he clearly lost. And, and obviously, I, I feel like this this Star Wars movie has the potential to be the highest grossing Star Wars movie ever. As any good so. Star Wars movie does. But because this is the final movie for Princess Leia. Oh, yes, true. That, that's it. I mean, sadly, she passed away. Um, yep. They're obviously going to have to kill off her character in this movie. Um, because they said they will not recast the role. So that's it. Um, and that's fine. I don't know if they, I mean, they might've been planning to kill her off in this movie or the, or the third movie anyways. They said that she was going to have a significant role in the third. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so they had to yeah, change it. doesn't it. mean they weren't going to kill her off at the end. You, you just, oh no, I'm sure they were they going could, to kill her. I mean, they eventually. Prob- I think if they weren't going to kill her off, they probably regret they didn't reverse the roles. And have her die in the first movie instead of Han Solo, <laughs> right? But yeah. I mean, they, you know, you don't know. You can't plan for that kind of stuff. I mean, Harrison Ford is pretty old too, so you just you don't. You don't right. Know. Well, you don't, he's older than she is. Yeah. <laughs> and yet again, there's another Indiana Jones movie coming out that I know I'm going to go see in theaters because I freaking <laughs> love Indiana Jones, even though I don't know how an ancient Harrison Ford. I mean, I know it's a stunt double doing all the stuff, but I don't care. Right. How, how I, I I don't know I like I just even though Crystal Skull wasn't that good the Indiana Jones moments in it were very Indiana Jones and I enjoyed it very much. There were yeah there were good moments. Well, because the, the moments, moments were like the action sequences when Indiana Jones is being Indiana Jones. I'm like oh my god that's yeah. awesome. Yeah and those I, some I, of those I were great. This in Indiana Jones. I understand that's not Harrison Ford swinging from the thing anymore. Obviously <laughs> no. He breaks his hip on set for Star Wars. He's not gonna you know be able to yep. do that anymore but still it's just it's cool who yeah knows? He, he it's might cool. even did the original stunts in the other movies either who knows i mean i that I've known that information is out there but it's not like i care <laughs> it doesn't it's not that it matters no i'd like indiana jones i've always it's just my favorite show and I, like i know they tried to, to replace him with shia labeouf basically oh he's my son and that didn't work yeah i like shia labeouf though Anyways. i know a lot of people don't we're going to wrap it up. That's going to do it for the Nintendo Prime Podcast. And you know what's cool about this? One thing I liked about our random time and the and the Mario movie topic, we got to talk about movies, which we don't do much at Nintendo Prime. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, that podcast. I had a good time being able to talk about some topics besides Nintendo. I know some people will be like, that's blasphemy. It's the Nintendo Prime Podcast. You know, <laughs> sometimes you just go with it. If you can't tell, we have interest in other things. Um. Yeah, I'm sure I'm going to get hated on for a ton of my opinions from this podcast. Like, I'm thinking back, man, did I really say that? I was, man, those are the opinions I told I would never make public. <laughs> <laughs> going to get blasted, but that's all right. That's all part of the part of being in the public eye, I guess. And it was one of the big 5J uh, for joining us. Um, I do want to note that 5J is getting really, really close to 1,000 subs. Uh, yeah. So if those of you out there have not subscribed to 5J's channel yet, Please go check it out. If you like what you see, subscribe. Uh, I really want to get him to 1,000 subs. I think 5J deserves it. I'm trying to give him the kickstart uh, that I think he's going to need to get his YouTube career going. Um, you know, Is he ever going to do it for a living? I have no idea. That doesn't matter. Just getting him going so he has more people. I, I think 5J does excellent content already. Um, Thank I, you. I can't sing his praises enough. I've watched a lot of live streamers in my day. He's the only live streamer that I've watched in the past three years that I can consistently watch the stream and not get bored. Thanks, man. So, you know, you see him here on the weekends. Go over and and, and subscribe to his channel. Good dude. Obviously has a lot of good things to say. He's kind of starting to become a regular on the podcast, which is totally fine. It's good to have more regulars. That's right. All right, folks. Go check him out. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter 
at Nate Chance or the actual site on Twitter. They're both me, but uh, at Ninty Prime. Uh, you can follow 5J as, isn't it at 5J? Uh, on Twitter? Yeah. Yep, at 5J. Okay. Um, otherwise, 5J Gaming everywhere else, Twitch, YouTube, blah, 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 blah. You type it in, it'll be the only thing that shows up. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, oh, and I, I do want to give a shout out again. I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, but uh, I can't thank our Patreon backers enough. Uh, you know, we're at like 160 bucks, more than I ever thought we would get to. Uh, several $20 backers that aren't even going to be on the podcast this month, uh, that weren't on the podcast last month. And they literally told me, one, they feel bad. They feel bad that they can't be on the podcast because they feel bad that, that they paid money but couldn't help me make content. How hmm. does that happen? Where people care so much about what I do that they feel bad that they're paying me to not help me make content when that's a perk that I'm supposed to be giving to them for them paying me. Um, right. <laughs> just shows how amazing the Nintendo Prime fan base really, really is. You know, we just hit 29,000 subs recently, aiming for 30 before the Woo-hoo. end of the year. Um, you guys are, are, are just amazing, all of you, whether or not you can support us monetarily or just, you know, watching our videos and sharing them around and, and liking and subscribing and just having conversations. I, my goal with this channel was always to build conversations around Nintendo. I don't view us as a Nintendo news channel. I don't view us as um, necessarily the best original content channel out there. I don't view us as a live streaming channel. Everything I do at the channel is built around just discussing this amazing medium of gaming. Uh, and in this case, this part of the podcast, the amazing medium of movies. Um, and just just discussion in general. I like discussing things if you can't tell. There's a reason that, you know, what for other channels might be a two-minute news video is a 12-minute video on my channel. So I want to talk about it. Um, and I'm hoping you guys want to talk about it too. So thank you so much for your support. It's been amazing. Uh, if you do want to support us on Patreon, we have a, a bunch of different tiers. Uh, I guess the biggest thing to advertise on the podcast is you can listen to the podcast a full day early uh, at patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime if you are part of the $5 tier and above. Uh, that's actually our second most popular tier. Our most popular tier right now is a twenty dollars tier, which is crazy, considering that they're not even taking advantage of it. So, wow, pretty pretty amazing. I, I every day I can't believe, you know, where where I where I came from to where I am today. Just just amazing, guys. Less than a year, and and this has already been one of the biggest success stories in my professional career. So, thank you guys so much. With that said, I guess I'm going to sign up. You want to say bye, 5J? All of you are the best. Thank you so much for watching the podcast. See ya. And hopefully Eric will be back next week. We'll see. Peace out.